Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully you can hear me. So, if uh, people need to tell me if they can, because, oh, uh, just yeah. So YouTube's been having a wobbly, and then they removed my. Can can people can people hear me? This is not a test. It is a test. <laughs> Uh, yeah, turn it up though. What do you mean, turn it up? Shut up. Sounds okay. It's not. Um, this is not a test of the sound. This is actually a test of the live stream. Uh, you see, right? So you see this. This volume now is peaking my mic. So if you can't hear it, then it's your fault. Uh, loud and clear. Good. Everyone can hear it. Um, are we going to be here till tomorrow? No, we're not. Tomorrow's live stream is going to go ahead as normal. So the problem was, is that YouTube... I don't know what happened. It's... <laughs> YouTube sent me an email saying that... They're, re they're removing my live stream capabilities. It didn't say why. It said, sorry for this inconvenience. And then it, it blabbed on. So I had to physically ring you, ring YouTube. You can ring YouTube on the phone, and that phone number is a fucking asshole to find. But I rang them, and for some reason, for some reason, they've made a cock up. I don't know what it is, and they removed my right to live streams. But it was an accident or something. Long story short. I tried to go live on Wednesday and it wouldn't let me. Like the the whole thing's greyed out, so it's just and it's come back. But they did say test it and make sure it does because sometimes it comes back, but then when you click it, it doesn't actually work. Um, so I've been pissed around doing stuff. I've been busy, busy, busy doing whatever you know all this rubbish. And then I thought, right, well, we'll do a live stream. I've got a subject here. If it is a live stream. If it's going to work, if it's not, I'm going to spend tonight pissing around. And it seems like it's working, so that's good. Because I do know, I was reading a forum that someone said they had this issue with YouTube. And they were saying it it worked for 10 minutes and then blanked out. So if it goes dead in 10 minutes, or around about 10 minutes, or within half an hour, then we know why. I, I just want to test it out now. Um, and we might as well, like I said, do a video on something. And, and then this popped up. This gem, which I haven't seen yet. And I thought, I'd, I was going to leave this for the live stream. But I've got enough for the live stream, so that's fine. Um, you probably be threatening someone's girlfriend. Probably, right? Maybe someone's girlfriend out there is called Derek. Who knows, right? <laughs> Maybe your friend's someone. Girlfriend, Matt, can we do carbs today? No, we can't. Carbs are shite, right? Carbs are also very, very simple. It, it to explain that exactly how each line works in combination with other things is one thing, but carbs are carbs are pretty simple, really. There's nothing, there's nothing much to them, and they're not very good. But um, can we do talk to yield bolts today? No, we can't. But you'll be happy because someone has graciously or i say graciously someone is about to send me a load cell where we can do some actual um tensile testing on my press so we can squish it and pull stuff that's great can we do two strokes today <laughs> we should do three strokes that's what we should do Carbs are just using Venturi effect to pull fuel out of the bowl. It's just some plumbing. Uh, uh. See, the Venturi effect, you can actually do carbs without using it in a certain way. There's, 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 there are like three different types of carbs, but any road. Um, and you, you just, you can do it. There's loads of different ways you can do it. But uh, is that Helicoil, uh, knowing it's real unrelated, but that Helicoil video was brilliant. Ah, oh, he's, he's, he's a good old, he's a good old boy, he's old Delany. The most important question is, how much do you weigh? Which is entirely true. Uh, tell the YouTube technicians to tap his PC on the top left-hand side, and if it still does the issue, he should lamp it. 
Uh, the, in basic terms, yeah, yeah, in basic terms. But it's just it's just it's balancing air pressures is what it's all about. He got him talking about calves. Why does your what's he say? Why does your can you turbo a two stroke video have so many dislikes? Um, I think it's the first thing you say. You see, because this is the thing. The first thing I said is, can you two stroke a turbo? Yes, and then it's like. Can you do it well? And like people are like, oh, you, uh, 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 this 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 bike the, or this thing makes three hundred horsepower. It's like yes, but if it was four stroke, could it make more? And they they can't think in two dimensions. It's just too fucking difficult. Uh, good evening, Matt. How are you? I'm all good. Carbs are a simple, no computers, many white coats types required. Well, you say that, but that's not true. A lot, a lot, not computers, but a lot, a lot of design and pissing around was put into carbs. The problem with carbs is, like with anything that's like that, is the fixed. It, that that's the problem. And if you fixed stuff, it, it's you know the jets are fixed where you want to change these things, and you can either do it two two ways. You either change things or you have multiple delivery. So in other words, pulsing. You know what I mean. So an injector can very fuel amounts just by time so you fix everything right you fix how it delivers fuel how it atomizes it how fine it does that and then you just change how long it stays open so then you, you've got the best of everything uh watching this video today and the clock the clock's bracket i don't think there was ever seen a nylock not what's the what's the density of brake fluid <laughs> is that just a random question what is the density of brake fluid? I don't know. Is it? It'll be less than water. I'm sure it's less than water, isn't it? Lower than water. The specific gravity of what is the specific gravity? Oh, is it? Oh, is it higher? When it, didn't we? I'm sure we looked at this. Wasn't it like one point two something? Specific gravity of water. And my keyboard keeps on changing. Oh, it's one. Of water. Idiot. <laughs> Brake fluid. <laughs> You've, why is the cap locks? He's just been a dickhead. Uh, oh. We looked at this before. I'm sure we did. It's like 1.02 or something. Uh, yeah, 1. 1.064 to 1.0. Seven. So that, that depends which one you want to go for. But they're about that. So it's just a tiny bit more than water. Uh, a bit higher than water. Uh, density of brake fluid. What the hell? It's Friday. Just watched uh, Dykes of Bar. I know he's dropped one just before the live stream. I, I'm I'm well chuffed. Let's set Matt off on a tangent. <laughs> there you go. That's how you do it. Jesus, so many people here. What a bunch of trolls and basement dweller tossers. Dude, these are all armchair experts. So uh, uh, sit down, relax in your armchair, and uh, what's the taxi rank? Uh, I'm in my living room watching it on TV and texting on my phone. Oh my god, the technology! If you fart, your density will increase. Is that true? No, because it's a. If you fart, there's there's a, an, an air cavity inside you with an, an air pressure. Then you fart and then you lose it. So it doesn't decrease. It'll it'll it'll, de it'll, in, it'll decrease, not increase. Surely. Unless that gas is put... No, because you're not swelling, are you? I agree carbs are fixed, but you can fix them anywhere, anytime with a bent screwdriver and a pair of rusty pliers. Yeah, but that's... My... <laughs> so that, I do want to talk about this very, very briefly, because Alan loves carbs. Is It's like this. Have you ever... Oh, no, what are you doing, Del? Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I hit the keyboard like a retard. Don't give, don't give the game away, Del. Um, so I will say this about carbs, right? Have you ever fixed? Have you ever fixed a carb with a screwdriver in the middle of nowhere? I don't think you have. Like, what did you fix? You can adjust a carb, but I don't think you fixed a carb with a screwdriver any time anywhere. Like, if a if a carb clogs up, you're not fixing it with a screwdriver. And that that's the point. The other thing as well is you didn't need to fix your fuel injection because it never broke. And maybe Rise Mrs. called the police because you threatened her girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ah, uh, shit. That's that's excellent. Uh, that is absolutely excellent. 
if I take a dump, why do I still wear the same? Well, I don't think you're measuring yourself heavy enough, uh, accurately enough. Heard you started doing MMA, Ma Matthew. MMA? MMA? Mixed martial arts? No, I didn't start doing mixed martial arts. Uh, I'm banned, uh, it's double N, banned from Dell's channel is this fake taxi. Believe it's what Wright caused us lot once. Oh, it's, it's what he called us once. Yes, yes, he's called us a load of things. Have you seen the new Fallout TV series, Power Armor Built for Prop It Up? No, I haven't seen... Is the Fallout TV series any good? And what's it on? Because I know a lot of you are into bikes, so you're not interested in this shit, but just hold on. I, I, I broach every subject as it comes. And I do like TV stuff. I do like films and TV and shit like that. Uh, I fix carbs in a field with... Not a screwdriver. <laughs> you haven't fixed it. Is it out already? Oh, it's, it's on Amazon, right? Cool. Yeah, I've got Amazon, so that's all good. The last good Fallout was number two. Do you know what? I've never played the games, ever. Yeah, I, I, I know what the games are. I used to have... Eric used to play Fallout. He's one of his... It's like Fallout New Vegas and all that shit, which some people reckon is the shit one, I think. Amazon, not Disney. Hopefully it's better than the Halo TV. I've heard horrible things about... I never played Halo. It's an Xbox game. Halo... An Xbox, I don't like Xbox stuff. Never played Halo. It always looked a bit too cartoony for me. Fallout New Vegas. Oh, was that the good one? Like I say, is the one after New Vegas? I, I, it's games. And after, I don't know, fucking Metal Gear Solid 2. Although Metal Gear Solid 3, I did play, and it's one of the best games of all time. Metal Gear Solid 3, right? Is like playing a Bond. It's like playing a James Bond game, but it's good because I don't like James Bond. Um, all all Bushida fallouts. Is Bushida the company that took over later? Hi Matt. Yes, I fixed old Suzuki GS thousand on the side of the motorway with a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. I block fuel feed between the carburetors. Well, that's the fuel feed. That's not the carbs, is it? Ah, burn! Hate playing games. I still watch other people play and watch them like a movie. A lot of them I like that nowadays, aren't they? Guy wiped it on the curtains in episode one. I couldn't stop laughing. Dude, is that in Fallout? Is that true? That's so funny. <laughs> uh, they're, they're an insult to the Black Isle... Black Isle maid. I don't know what that is. Still, Battlefield like a shit game to me. It looked terrible. Fallout 76 was a shit one. Right, there we go. Any road, you don't like James Bond because he's Irish. Was James Bond Irish? That's something I didn't know. Was James Bond himself, was he actually Irish? Because I thought it was... I thought the whole Skyfall thing was he was brought up in Scotland, but obviously he could be brought up in Scotland. It doesn't mean you, you're Scottish, but... He went to a Scottish... I thought he was English. I thought that was the whole point. James Bond was English. I fixed the cabinet filled with a screwdriver. Unscrewed fuel balls, main jet. Unscrewed main jet and pilot jets. Cleaned all... Get the fuck out of here. What did you clean them with? Your mouth? What did you do? Lick it? Uh, and I don't believe you lying bastard. Um, watch other video playing games. It's like watching other people shag because you don't like it. Could be. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid 3 was fucking amazing. The first one was really, really, really good. The second one I didn't like at all. The third one was fucking amazing. The fourth one was meh. The fifth one I haven't played. But Metal Gear Solid 3 was fucking amazing. Right, what we'll do is we'll quickly... We'll spend five minutes and then we'll move on. We'll move on to Dell. But we'll talk for five minutes about games. Because I know people will ask me, they'll start throwing shit at me. So I'm not a big game player at all. But I will name the games that I've played that I thought were fucking amazing. So Metal Gear... So this is my top 5, 10, I don't know. This is my top 5 or 10 games that I played. And they're all going to be old schools, right? And they're going to be... Because they're going to be well out of date. Because obviously I don't play whatever. I don't play shit anymore. So number one... Oh, the best game I've ever played. I don't know, actually. It's a good one. But... In the list is Metal Gear Solid 3. Um, people loved Resident Evil 4, and people who love Resident Evil 4 are wrong, right? They're just wrong. 
<laughs> it's a good game, but it ruined Resident Evil. So Resident Evil 1 was the bollocks, right? Resident Evil 1 was the really good one. And I did play the remake for the GameCube and it was fucking amazing. Uh, Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8. People don't like Final Fantasy 8 because they're expecting Final Fantasy 7 and they're wrong. And ever since then, Final Fantasy has turned to shite. But Final Fantasy 8 was the... Final Fantasy 8 is as good as Final Fantasy 7, just in different ways. Apart from... There was one or two things that I do believe was meh. Resident Evil 2 got rid of the creepy side of things. Didn't like it. It, it was okay, but the whole... It, 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 it's the whole boss battle thing I don't like. I, I don't like that. It, there are a load of games that like that great, but I think Resident Evil should have stayed away from that. The whole Albert Wesker stuff, the whole Tyrant stuff, loved it. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is games that i really like oh alien isolation uh if you don't think that and i know people talk about soma and people talk about dead space if people don't think a game can scare you all right <laughs> alien isolation scared the shit out of me fuck me i turned the music off because it was fucking horrible and i couldn't play it and sit in the dark with your headphones on because you need headphones because it's the best way to get the sound into your head headphones on in the dark playing alien isolation scared the fuck out of me it's just, and it's not jump scares. It's like, oh, I don't want to go down here anymore. I don't want to go down here anymore. I, 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 let's just turn back and go that way. <laughs> that game is fucking amazing. And people complained it was too long. It wasn't. It's just because you were scared. That's why it was too long. Abe's Odyssey is amazing. That is an amazing game. Uh, what else have we got? Medieval One, Spyro. Don't like Spyro. Crash Bandicoot. They were good fun, but Worms Armageddon is a good one, but. In my series, I would include Abe's Odyssey and Exodus. Exodus wasn't as good, though. But Abe's Odyssey was fucking amazing. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was. There's not many. There's not many games that I'm like, that was fucking great. And a lot of these games are a mix of story and playing the game. And to me, that's everything. If you can get a story and mix it in with the game... Like, you know, Metal Gear Solid 3... Resident Evil, shit like that. This was, and Resident Evil for me was we were kids in the street, and Dean and Dogda, Dean and Daniel lived at the other end of the street. They had their parents used to just buy whatever they wanted, and the PlayStation was coming, had just come out, and then they were, they were fucking getting all the PlayStation magazines, and every week they were like, oh look, a new bit about Resident Evil. So we had drummed up, and this never happens anymore, but it does happen, but not in the same kind of way. We drummed up this whole, oh my god, Resident Evil is coming out, this game, this fucking... And it was made by... It was distributed by Virgin Media, of all people, and made by Capcom. It was fucking crazy. And it was delayed, and it was this, that, and the other, and it blew everyone away. It, no one had ever seen anything like that, because it was the paint on backgrounds with very, very basic graphics. And... But it, it didn't half work. The the sound editing and the scripting was terrible. It was, but for a you know it's a nostalgic thing for the time. And then like I say, when I watched the remake, that played the remake for the GameCube is absolutely fucking amazing, absolutely amazing. And hopefully they would. I know they might. They probably will do in like ten years, twenty years. They'll probably make another one. But God of War, I haven't played. I'm not into fantasy stuff either. It's more science fictiony kind of stuff than 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 fantasy malarkey. Although I, my mate Nagsy used to play Devil May Cry. I used to love. To, I, that's the only game I think I've ever watched anyone play, and I thought I actually just like watching this happen. That was quite good. Um, but I, as far as the game, I, I didn't play it myself, and I don't really know that much of about it. Uh, Dead Space, I haven't played, and I know everyone says that you should, but. It, it's like I didn't. I've seen people play tiny bits of um, what's it called now? Um, fuck, Silent Hill. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's it's one of the, Half Life. Now, right, yeah, you see, now now I'm thinking Alien vs Predator, the original one, the very very original, one, which was fucking awesome. We played the demo for like six months, and then the game came out, and the game was pretty disappointing. <laughs> The demo was the best bit. Um, Half Life, yes, is a game I played. Uh, played that to death. That was amazing. Assassin's Creed, I did. Do you know what? 
There was one before Assassin's Creed, and I can't remember, was it Thief? Early placed early PC game, because it was more it was more PC stuff than console stuff. Desert Strike was fucking amazing. I played that to death. Alien 3 I played to death, actually. Alien Trilogy was fucking terrible, but I played it anyway. Um, Half-Life 3... I, I, I haven't played Half-Life 2. Ha- Thief was great because you had water arrows and you could put candles out with them. <laughs> Desert Strike was... Ur- there was there's Urban Strike, Desert Strike. Desert Strike was fucking amazing. Road Rush was fucking amazing. They were shite, like, you know, they were shit. But Desert Strike I actually really liked. Um, there's a police. I, there's a, a a police. Oh, that's giving it away. There's a game I used to play that I used to love, and it's a very personal thing. But I used to love playing G Police. It was on Callisto. You fly around in these domes. I used to love it. Absolutely fucking love it. Um, but yeah, G Police was a brilliant one, and it was just my own thing. Like most people didn't like it, I fucking loved it. Shockwave was another one. I liked how fast it was. Um, but this is going. This is going right back. You know what I mean. So that so you know the PC. This is Mega Drive and stuff. Early consoles and you know the the very early PlayStation stuff. You know everyone played Demolition Derby. God, that was a shit game, but we played it. Wipeout. That was it. Wipeout. Not Shockwave. Wipeout. That was really. Do you know what? That was really fast. Um. Yeah. The the havoc. The havoc, the havoc helicopters, yeah. The G Police was amazing. G Police Two wasn't that bad, but the first one was really fucking hard. Uh, Quake, Bioshock, I haven't played. Uh, Quake, I have, but the first one. Um, I even remember playing on the PC, playing stuff like Delta Force, which was one of the first. Like it went on forever. Like the world was huge. Uh, Delta Force and Delta Force Two. And I also played oh, what was the same thing on the along those lines. Someone just said it, not Bioshock. Uh, oh, Rainbow Six. <laughs> I remember Rainbow Six and been really impressed about how seriously they took stuff like oh, that's an actual MP5. And Rainbow Six, there was like oh, silenced weapons and trying to do stuff quietly. Doom and Duke Nukem. I had a, a, some friends who in that circle of friends kind of played that shit. So there was I had kind of like two circles of friends that played games. Ones that played the very arcadey games, and then other another group of friends that played stuff like uh, like Final Fantasy and shit like that. So it was more arcadey or more cutting edge games. So a bit of both. Wolfenstein is a game I haven't played. Uh, Hitman is another one I haven't played. Micro Machines was absolutely fucking great. That was good fun. It, like I say, you, you go around with someone's and they're playing a game, and then you go around with someone else's and they're playing a game. And I was at the time when all of this was, and I'm not saying that other people weren't. I'm just saying I was at the time when all of this went from it was the the, the console era. You know what I mean? Um, we had Duck Hunt, Mario. You know what I mean? Uh, and I was watching a video the other day about how people do speedruns of Mar- the the original Mario for the NES. And it's like they do the whole fucking thing in like six minutes or something. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? Or however quick they do it. It's like fucking crazy. I stripped a six millimeter thread. Well, right, we're done with games now. We're done with games. Golden Axe is absolutely fucking amazing. Rayman, that was quite good. Um, I stripped a six millimeter bolt earlier in the steel engine block. Watched some videos of some guy explaining the drill sizes. My engine is now in the scrapyard. Steel engine blocks. Um, Deus Ex. Yes, yes. Uh, there was a game I used to play. It's a PC game. It's called. Was it Alexa? Maybe Alexa. It was one of the first games you could ever actually import skins into it. And everyone give the, the, the evil woman a fucking... They give the naked body skin. Um, but yeah, on, on XCOM. And sorry, there you go. So part of my Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, those kind of games, XCOM, the, the original XCOM. I played that as a kid forever at my mate Alex's house. And then we used to play... We, we played that... This is the thing, right? We must have played that game for about four years. We played, yeah, we played game. We we played XCOM for four years. We'd play it. The we'd play at the end. We'd we'd we'd, we'd play it, and then 
it would beat us and we put on the easiest setting and eventually got near the end and then we were like right before we get to the end let's start again and then do uh, and we used to what we used to do is we used to take turns so someone would do the the geoscape stuff and someone would do the missions for that month and then we'd swap over and then we used to just do that on the week like i used to go around and see him on a saturday and we used to hang around and do that because he was he had a he had a he had spina bifida and he had a few problems so he couldn't really go out and climb trees and shit like that um but uh yeah it's XCOM. we played like four years it's fucking amazing and then they brought out the newer ones, and I have played them, actually. They're all right, but it's just not the same thing. They've completely got rid of the Geoscape bit of it, and it really fucking pisses me off. They, they need to balance both halves. But at least they kept it turn-based, which is amazing, really. And I think that the animations are terrible, and I think that the alien designs are terrible. And when I used to play XCOM, it was literally when... Because um, that's the other thing you don't think about as well is that a lot of these games and stuff came out at the same time other media came out. So we were playing XCOM, shooting down UFOs and going to go and try and get the technology out of them all that shit. And fucking X Files was a massive thing at the time. You know what I mean? So on TV you'd watch shit about X Files and all that shite, and then you'd you'd play a game like that, and it was always backwards and forwards. You know what I mean? So it was. It was always that. It was quite cool Was that there's this thing going on. Where nowadays, you've got Celebrity Love Island and Call of Duty. <laughs> it just doesn't... Maybe they are the same. Who knows? <laughs> the battle through stupidity and the battle through Afghanistan. Pr- pretty much probably the same thing. Um, Any road, I'm sure there's some guys who are listening and watching along who have got not a clue what we're talking about. And let's instead get back to what this is all about. Which is uh, the Dell Balls. Any road, so let, let's cut the the, the chit chat about games, and we'll we'll we'll. One day I'll do a gaming stream, not where I play a game or anything. Just when I will just talk, we'll just do a, a a stream about games, just for the people who want to talk about that kind of shite. Um, not the tangent we were expecting. Well, exactly. You see, well, the thing is, it does matter to see. We're all just here just to fucking piss around. I love playing three power return of the bespark. <laughs> nice. Right, I've got to be quick with these. When everything feels like it's going against you, okay, remember that a bird. Oh, I thought it said bad. Remember that a bird takes off against the wind, not with it. Well, that's bollocks. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you think a bird puts up its feather, licks a feather, puts up in the wind and goes, oh, that way. So when you go and scare a load of pigeons, they all turn to fly off into wind. That's bollocks. What happens if it's not windy? Shut up, Del. God, tit. Ah. Oh. Hi, good morning, welcome back. Okay, part 14 on the Hayabusa project. Another bracket to hold a hybrid part in place. This is... is D- Dell's videos are just going to become... brackets. Like, if you watch, like, I don't know, Bad Obsession Motors or something, right? They'll do an entire episode. Now, I know their episodes come out once every blue moon, but there's about 50 brackets in their videos, in the one video. It's the standard brake reservoir pot. For a Hayabusa, it was in the standard tail frame in its neat. I don't think it was there, though, was it? Little recess. Well, that's gone. Oh no, it was in the recess. Yeah, it's in the back. What? What hang about? That's gone. Okay. So that's going to be gone as well because it's a big, ugly, boxy thing. All right. So he's, what he's saying is, is he's saying that the subframe is different. But it's only missing a little thing. So missing a little bracket because it fits nicely in there, does it not? tail frame in its neat little recess well that's gone so that's going to be gone as well because it's a big ugly boxy thing anyway i want to put one of these really nice dinky little pots in place instead i'm not a great fan of the little piece of tube um they can often leak and i think they look why do they often leak are you talking about a bit of a cheap solution i think that's the far better way to do it now that little pot's going to look just right i want it about the the, the tubes are shite but i think you're making stuff up when you say that they leak i don't understand why they leak that's attached to a tube, you dickhead. There, 
in place so it's physically visible and I can check the fluid level at a glance but I don't want it sticking out or showing nice and unobtrusive and for that I need a bespoke Sorry, bracket. Whoa, 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 apart from you saying bespoke which I do love, thanks Del. Um, unobtrusive? In place so it's physically visible and I can check the fluid level at a glance but I don't want it sticking out or showing nice and unobtrusive. You just said you know it's showing when you can see it, you're contradicting yourself. But number two is unobtrusive. So surely obtrusive is like, I don't know, three people in the chat who are sat there talking in person, you know, they're at a pub talking, and I just burst in and go, oi, fucking stop talking your bollocks. Let me tell you about what TM uh, fucking Slaphead has said. That would be, you know, a bit obtrusive. But that's meant to live there. That's not obtrusive is it if it's meant to live there that's where it's meant to live does he mean does he mean recessed into the frame so it doesn't stick out is that what he means and for that i need a delbox has already deleted my comment i posted an hour ago well, of course he has come on now spoke bracket that's my <laughs> fucking bespoke hang about did he just throw up in his mouth a bit <laughs> Watch this. It's like he throws up in his mouth. He's choking on his own shite. In place, so it's physically visible, and I can check the fluid level at a glance, but I don't want it sticking out or showing nice and unobtrusive. And for that, I need a bespoke bracket. So let's make another one. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he just fucking threw up in his own mouth. So, the whole idea is to make this recessed like the original. He's going to make his own bespoke bracket. <laughs> Bit of sick. He's gonna make his own bespoke bracket with a smile on his face. Okay, cool. This 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 shan't be difficult. Oh, what was that? Oh. Oh, cool. Is it? Does does Del think he's the king? <laughs> Oh, even someone, whoever made this, even someone who did this can't do this symmetrical look at the fucking state of that. It's brilliant. Must be one of his fans. Or he did it himself. Oh, for God's sake. We have to watch him literally sharpen a pencil or watch paint dry. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you, can't, you can't even use a pencil properly. <laughs> he presses so hard that he breaks the lead listen to when he pushes down you can hear the lead snap for fuck's sake why are you pressing so hard are you annoyed that you're having to use a ruler Everyone in the world is fighting wokeness. Spare a thought for us lot in here fighting bespokeness. <laughs> oh, ears, though. Ears. Come on. Right, we're going to take this seriously now. Stop pissing about. Let's take this seriously. But why do you need to do that? You just say, I'm going to put a hole here. Why is he doing this again? You just you just say, right, I'm going to start here. This is where my hole's going to be. You draw an X and say, there. On what occasion do we get Friday streams going to get spoiled? Now, nah, this is just a, yeah, it's just a test. For God's sake. Right. If you draw an X... Oh, I forgot. Right, it's going to be paintbrush time again. So let's just say a stripper card is this big. All you do is you just go there and there. And you go, right, there's my X. I don't need to do anything else with it. I'm going to put, just say, an 8mm all in there, a 6mm all in there, or whatever. And then from there, you measure. You know, you measure, you draw a line here, and you draw a line, whatever he's doing, I don't know. He's doing some weird brackety thing or whatever. I don't bloody know what he's doing. But you get what I mean. And then once you've done all that, you say, right, that's this distance from there. And if I have to put another hole in somewhere, then I'll go right from there and then down so I can draw, you know, a, a light pencil mark, just see so in this case we're doing grey. 
we do a light pencil mark and that's 30 millimeters or whatever and then we come down and we say from there to there that's there and you go right cool now i've done that i just mark a crosshair there in between my, my, my marks where they intersect like that bingo so i can put a hole there put a hole there put a radius you know put a radius in there if i want blah 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 blah, blah sorted but instead he's poking a he's poking a hole through with his pencil so you've now lost your datum you've lost your starting point it's just insane i don't know why you do that hey what are you doing now what kind of measurement is that what is that? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. What is that? I got one of those eight-pound Amazon special hole punch. You don't need to punch holes. This is a template. Like you want the specific center point because that's how you use your trans. You, you transfer punches or your center punch or whatever. You're making a template. You're not making it. Ah, oh, you fucking. Do you know what? Just kill me now. But you've got I don't understand right. I love I love these ones. You've got a hook on the end. Here's a straight edge. Why what There's a hook there you can like you oh, get a square. You've got a square we've seen it. Oh, I'm different. I'm, I I put pencils in my cap instead of on my ear like the rest of humanity. God, even the ancient Egyptians probably fucking did that. Oh, here we go. What What's that? What's that marking? All oh, right, so I get you. So he's going to have the bracket and then this go around and then it's going to go flat again and then he's going to bolt that into it, I'm imagining, because he needs this to be on the outside. Oh, look at that precision. But you see, a normal person would make this lug, the other lug, out of this bit of material. One lug here to attach it to the bike, the other lug to attach it to the thing. Then they'd get a bit of tubing and then they cut the tubing in half, and then there's your shape done. It's sorted. And you just tack weld them together, nothing crazy. Sorted. You didn't even bend it on your line there, you, di you dickhead. Right, so this is why I wanted to do a video. Well, this is why I was going to use this as a video. Because if we actually go to the video, the video, where's, where's, there's going to be a Dell thing here. I, just, I, I don't want to lose our place, that's all. If you actually go to this video and look at the thumbnail, the problem is, is you can't unscrew that now. Because even if you can get at the threads, uh, even if you can get at the, the, the bit, you try and unscrew it, you can't get the lid off. You can't get the lid off back on. So you've made this less useful. Because the whole point of having these caps is that, just say you're riding out with your mates or whatever, and you look off and you go, oh my god, I've just noticed that this is on the below lo lower than the minimum level. Then you can go into the petrol station, Grab a bottle of brake fluid, pop the top off, and this is why they're trying to. It's why they're trying to make all brake fluid the same brake fluid, and then you just pour in the brake fluid to top it up, and then you put the cap back on. This is why it has a minimax line, and it doesn't tell you what it is in bloody milliliters or whatever. It just has a minimax line. It's that simple. But now you can't get it off, and I know someone's going to say, "Well, you just undo this bolt," but I'm at the side of the road. I ain't got a fucking toolbox with me. That's the whole point. It was actually the main reason why... Because if you think about your bike, right? Your bike, look at the exterior of any bike, and you're like, there are no um, GIS countersunk fittings on the outside of the bike. So why are the two screws 
that fit in the brake reservoir for my front brakes. It's so you can the chances of find you know the chances of going to a petrol station or being able to grab a a Phillips type screwdriver in this GIS a Phillips type screwdriver is a lot more than it is anything else. That's the reason why they didn't use hexes. It's the reason why they didn't use Torx fasteners. It's the reason why they didn't do that, and it's the reason why most bikes nowadays have these. Yes, the lighter, yes, the cheaper to make, but you can unscrew them anywhere because they're just sat there as reservoirs for your brake and your clutch and your rear master cylinders. That's the reason why. So you can fill them up fucking anywhere. But not this. But not this. Because he's just he's just made something less useful. <laughs> just fucking less useful. Never owned a bike without a toolkit with a screwdriver. Well, the whole point is is that you can fill them anywhere. If you think about your car, pop your bonnet and you've got your oil, you've got your coolant, you've got all of these things that can be done by hand, right? You can unscrew them with your bare mitts. Because it's like this. If you don't have hands, you shouldn't be driving. So, in other words, anyone can change these at any time. That is the whole point. And... You know, so if you do, oh my God, look, it's lower than, you know, like how many people have been out somewhere and all of a sudden it says, you know, you get a, a, an indicator saying your oil's low or your, 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 your coolant's low or something. It happens to people all the time. And it means that you can just open it up at the roadside. This is why at petrol stations, they give you the, the, the water. You know, there's air and water so you can top up your radiator in an emergency kind of thing so you don't overcook your engine. You know, these things have been thought of over a long, long time. It's almost like putting on top of a cap, do not open when hot. It's kind of like that, really. You know what I mean? And it's like, this was the whole intention of this entire system. And you've just gone and made it, so it's fucking useless. So, it, it really annoys me when people take something that, it, you know, nothing's perfect, but someone's put some thought into this and then you've just gone <laughs> no I'm getting lost here what's going on I'm getting lost what the hell is going on useless you're certain types of Citroen owners where the battery is behind. Yeah, well, they've started doing that. It's because over time, bumping vehicles became so... Not many people do it anymore. And because there's quite a few vehicles that have done that. They put the battery... My mate's got a Citroen diesel, a white thing with a black roof, horrible thing. And his, I think his battery is behind his passenger seat or something crazy. Bikes should come with a special tool to open radiator caps when the coolant is hot. <laughs> yeah, the tool's called Dell. He is a fucking tool. What is going on? I'm com proper confused here. What are all these lines for? How do you know what's what? You just cut the. You just spent loads of time drawing lines on that. You just cut it off. See you later. <laughs> what's the point in that? I put a comment on one of Dell's videos for the booster clock mount saying it looked like a kid made it and he deleted it in five minutes later. Nob. There you go. Right, okay. Matt, I think you broke the ginge. No new vid in two weeks' time. Do you know what? I think he's he, been serious. Either he's just doing whatever he might have gone on holiday or something. But he might have fucking come off one of these bikes. I would not be surprised if he did. For instance, people watching his bike... Like, I, I, that's a good point, actually. Um, if you go to his videos... right? Because he's going to hurt himself. I've just finished doing the uh, RSV series, recording them. It is the funniest shit ever. Uh, he, he, the RSV is probably one of the best ones so far. He is such a fucking idiot. So, uh, where did he? Where did he crash the yam yam? Um, because 
Because what was the distance there? So he wrecked his, what is it? Um, so yeah, he did that. Did that. Then 10 months, then 10 months, then 10 months. Then there was a month. It looked like a good, it could be a good month. Who knows? But there could be a good month from not putting up a video or it's a couple of days. Who knows? But he didn't even injure himself in that case. So pff, pff. if we carry on with the way we are going, it won't be long before topping up break would require a trip to the Steeler. I don't understand. What do you mean? Nothing's changed. What's changed? The reason why you have to go to the dealers just say for certain things like, oh, your ECU's buggered, is because that's just the nature of ECU's. But um, I think you've been a very old man, Alan, that things have to move on. Like, it's like, think about it this way. Do you know back in the day when people used to tell you news about something that's happened, someone to say, the king's died. You'd be like, oh, my God. And it used to be a town crier. And then they, then they invented the wireless. Well, you know, wirelesses are a lot more hard to uh, repair than and need specialist tools. Back in the 1900s, people didn't have these tools at all. Um, you know, so if you were in 1910 and your wireless fucked up, you were fucked. That's it. You couldn't repair it yourself. There's just no chance. Because, like, you can now go to a place and just buy a soldering iron and buy some solder and buy even lead-free solder, thieving bastards. And you can go and buy all this stuff. But back then, you were fucked. No one had soldering irons. No one had this stuff. So I think you're talking nonsense. We've got more ability to fix things now than we've ever had. And people keep on saying, they keep on trying to make us. No, they don't keep on trying to make you. There's certain things that they lock people out of because people will kill themselves. <laughs> That's why. And then if people start killing themselves, people say, why are they doing anything about it? Filling modern car coolant systems is a pain in the ass. They have to be vacuum filled. Really? What car system needs to be vacuum filled? Vacuum filled. Oh, is he using the, the ninja throwing star? There's a somewhat interesting YouTube video of a Russ bloke. Russian bloke, I think mean, that's mean. That shows what happens when you overfill your oil, what happens when you actually overfill your oil and motorcycle, motor oil with transparent oil pan. Well, I'm not sure you're fucking anything. It's from the bottom. A BMW M5. So a BMW, what, what year BMW M5? Vacuum bled not filled. Don't fill your vacuum support system with the FOMA kids. It certainly makes it easier on some cars. For instance, there's a pain to bleed the coolant. Better, no, more oil equals better. What, what's it? What's it? What, oh, I'm, I'm missing this. We're talking about two or three things here. Because else you risk an air pocket that can warp the cylinder head. What well, when you fill it with coolant? You telling me that the, the the air can't get in, the air can't get out. You do know air floats in water, right? Um, Biker's Quest, exactly. Is ye old nineties, not modern modern. A lot of modern stuff is designed in a way that makes servicing complicated. No, they're not. Right. You, You've got to have an example. You can't just... I, you, some of you have these little fairy tale ideas. No one is paid an engineer to ever make anything... to Because you've said something specific. Designed to make servicing complicated. It's bollocks. You've got to give me an example. The rads are in a weird place on the newer M M5s. Well, I don't, I don't understand what that means. You're going to have to... Come on, lads. You're going to have to do better than this. I'm talking about my old BMW K12 GT that needed the coolant system under vacuum whilst filling it because the cylinder head is the highest point in the system. Yeah, but surely you, you can you can still do that, right? I watched what Matt who rebuilds. I watched that Matt who rebuilds wrecked. C is that cars? Um, people can also do stupid things. Uh, it's it's a car stuff. 
Some cars, the expansion tank is lower. Yeah, but if you raise it, <laughs> if you raise it when you fill it, it's, yeah. I, I think some people have just been stupid. I think some people have just been daft. It's, someone's going to have to send me a link to the exact car and the exact, you know, more thingy. And we'll, we'll bring it up in a live stream. You can't rebuild a rec customer reputation, uh, service reputation, rep representative. Cars, sorry, I'm on mobile. And yeah, the BMW M5 is required in the manual to fill it that way. I, I think people have been stupid. It, just because it says in the manual, they might have a system that's quicker, but surely there's a way around that. How much do you have to hate yourself to buy an E36? It's an engine rebuild on wheels. Look, he's, he's, he's going to use the Ninja Throwing Star, but he put the beef down. Why did he put the beef down? I didn't notice what he put the beef down for. So he got the Ninja Throwing Star out and thought, that's a bit dangerous. Yes, there's a way around it, but they do have a reputation for being a pain. Yeah, but... <laughs> Do you know what? Spark plugs can be a right cunt. So? <laughs> some things some things can be difficult, that's fine. You know what I mean? It's like, this car, th or this car slash bike, the oil filter's really easy to get at. This one is a pain in the ass. So? It doesn't really matter, does it? The, the, it because it swings and roundabouts. Because one coolant system might be a knob to do, but the oil, uh, the oil pump's easy to get at. You get what I mean? Um, I bought an E36 and the heat, head, the heat gasket went on the drive home. The head gasket. So what we're we doing? We've got some different material. No, that's 1.2 Dell. It's one mil thick. Apart from it says that's 1.2. The problem with Del Boy is he doesn't know his standard materials. So 0 0.8, 1 mil, 0 0.2, uh, 1.2, sorry, 1.5. These are quite standard sizes for sheet material. And then usually it goes from 1.5 to 2 mil. And it's it's usually based on strength versus weight. So there is no point, there is no 1.75 or there usually isn't 1.75 or 1.8 because the difference is a big step from 1.5 to 2 mil where verse, strength versus weight so it's not beef it's not beef at all it's not even a it's just it's, it's not even a nice fraction of beef is it but uh standard materials soft and hard do you know what someone asked me this the other day and they didn't believe me when i told them but you can get like quarter hard half hard three quarter hard material like it's called that in the industry uh, and people, I said it to someone, and they said I'm talking nonsense. And I said, "What are you talking about?" They're like, "I was like, yeah, you can get, you you can request like quarter hard and half hard material." And they're like, "No, you can't." I was like, "Yes, you fucking can." And it, it, I I do love it because I asked the guy what he does for a living, and he says, "I work in IT." And I was like, "And you've ever done any? Have you ever done any fucking, you know? Because you you don't want to kick people. They might, you know, they might have failed engineering. You don't know." I said, and you've done no kind of engineering qualification. He's like, well, no. I was like, well, shut the fuck up then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, the mild, the mild steel isn't actually about hardness. It's 95% soft, that's the one. Uh, standard sheet steel material is 1.6, not 1.5. Oh, is it? Is it? Is it really? That's strange. Uh, what do they call it? Because it's all gauge, and I hate gauges. Uh, 1.5 millimeter thick steel. Or oh. it's it's everywhere. But oh, I'm trying to think who would ha who would have. How do I find the standards? It's the That's tolerances, though. How to vent bleed current systems on a what is it? Do you know what? I'll copy that. I'll look at that later because I want to have a good look at it. 
Um, oh, actually, is, is that a video on YouTube? Because if that's a video on YouTube, we might have a quick gander. But I wanted to see the whole system, not just someone's video on it. Um, this one. Must be that one, because that's the title you did. 2 minutes 49, that's easy. So what is the... I can't remember what the, the specifications are. Um... The 568, 568 is probably, 568 is, yeah, I'm trying to think, is 568, but that's the, no, that will be, I think 568 is probably the, the most, uh, oh god, look at that, $70, um, rolled alloys, have we got a table? Um, so these are what they roll to and their tolerances. So they've got point zero point five five, uh, point four, point three five. What the hell are these? Or is this before? Is this before they give it to? This is hot rolled mill plate. I don't know. This is something else. Um, thickness tolerance ranges. I said, is there a chart? Is there a chart? It's probably the best thing we should look for, really. Just a chart. Oh, I hate when they do that. They give you a chart, but they don't give you up. Tiny. Why are all these tiny? There, there we go. Oh, this is pipe dimensions. That's not what I want. Jesus Christ alive. Gauges. So they've got 10, 12, 14, 16. Um, steel gauge. Steel gauge. Uh, thickness in, that's in inch, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh! <laughs> I spelled gauge wrong, you tit. That's probably why. Oh, it's not. It's just, it's just corrected it anyway. Uh, in my work, we use 0 0.9, 1.2, 1.5, 2, mild steel, 1.2 and 1.5 for stainless. Yeah, that's usually the standard. Alan's gone quiet. I don't know why Alan's gone quiet. He should be giving me directions of what he thinks is the... Um, it's not the tolerance chart, A36 standards, but that's actually material standards. Thing gauge, steel standards, but that could be fucking, that could be anything. Uh, can we get back to carbs? No, no, you started this. Steel gauge, to, I, I, I don't know why I didn't just put this, two millimetres. So, oh, for fuck's sake, what is wrong with you? Come on, there we go. So, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, but these are gauges, right? These are American gauges, and that's what these apply to. So, these are the ASTM standards, the gauges, and that's what these apply to. And then if you look, you've got stuff like 1.29 1.31 1.34 so these are just gauges in steel manufacturing in the modern world we don't generally use gauges what we do is we choose a material thickness and say what its equivalent is in at the old american gauge that's what i was looking for the chart like i say the standards that you the standard steels that you buy are one mill well, zero point eight, one point uh, one millimeter, one point two, one point four, one point five, and it usually just stops there. If you go to anywhere, that's probably you you're not gonna find a one point eight or a one point six, stuff like that. It is just the way it is. Sixteen gauge is one point five eight seven. <laughs> exactly. A stupid size. And like I say, American gauges are American gauges. And who buys steel from America? Everyone buys steel from China. Everyone knows that. Even the Americans.
Right. We're tr so he spent a lot of time drawing this out. Let's see if he spends the same amount of time drawing this out on the steel, because he generally doesn't want to do that. This is where we, we start rushing. Oh, he's doing it again! He's doing it again! Oh, shit! Ah. No, he doesn't use a scribe. Why would you bother doing that? So, <laughs> he does this He does this every time. Plate of steel. You've marked out this shape, right? You've got this plate of steel, and you've marked out this shape, like that. So, what he should do to save his own stock is he should cut out that bit to there. Is that how thick that line is? Didn't get, like, didn't get any thicker there. And then he should cut out to there, right? So he should cut that out and then grab this in the vise and then cut this, that bit there. This is his second cut and his, th his third and fourth cut, if you want to call that. Cut that bit out. Then he'll have this little slither he can put in his box for a bracket later on and then he's only cut this out of the material. Instead, he cuts... <laughs> he cuts into there like that he cuts into there like that and then it falls off and or, or he starts cutting across here like this <laughs> like this and then it's like but now you've got this piece of steel right and you think well i've saved this bit but you've you've you've, you've eaten into this and you've eaten into this what a tit why? Look! You're chewing into virgin material. What are you doing that for? Why do you do this? Look! It's a fucking... Oh, painful. You, you, you just didn't need to do this. You didn't need to do this. Why have you done? Why have you done this? You can see. <laughs> For fuck's sake! Why hasn't he bought a little plasma cutter? Right, that is not a reason. You can't. You can't go around saying that. That'd be like me turning around and saying, "Well, why haven't you bought fucking like if you if I you put up a video right and you're you've got a milling machine and you I don't know make a, a, a hex shaped fucking whatever and i'd be like why don't you get a cnc machine it'd be a lot fucking easier it, it well there's you can just use it because you you can just say because craig would cut that with a grinder i'd cut that with a grinder. i wouldn't bother getting the fucking cns the plasma cutter fucking well even working but <laughs> it's been a knob uh, but i'm getting there um like why don't you use his bandsaw it, he's fine using his grinder, but he doesn't use it properly. And he usually burns his hands, which is quite funny. Like, like, he, he could... He, he, you've seen his material. He's got stabby bits all over the fucking shop. That's not what that vice. That's not how you use that vice. Stop it. That's it. Look at bend. Oh, you've got a step drill as well. Use the step drill, you dickhead. Nah, you can get an OK plasma cut for two hundred. You, 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 you're literally ignoring what I've just said. I, you can go nah. I'll go fuck you nah. Right. Why why bother why spend two hundred quid, right, when you've got when you've already got the discs and you've already got the grinder, you dumb ass. Stop being stupid. One point six millimeter thick material will be plenty of beef enough for that bracket if just all and just about all steel merchants will carry it. I don't know what the exclamation for and I don't know what the comments even about. At least he's doing this. At least he's not fucking stuck this in the drill, the fucking pillar drill, and he's just fucking raping the shit out of it. Why do you cut it so big? <laughs> Oh, 
he's ruined that corner now. Well done. Yeah, we call that the hockey stick. <laughs> oh, shit. Precision, precision. Oh, we're, scri we're scribing this time. We're scribing this time. He hasn't used a square, but we're scribing. Right, angles, angles, angles. Oh. And that one's about oh. 45 there. And then that. So that one's 90. Right, we're, we're scribing for some reason all of a sudden. Oh, please get a hammer out. Please get a hammer out. Oh, I love it when he does shit like this. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? Oh, I can see it's crippling it already. Oh. What's this say? Colleagues at work at, neighbor, at a neighbourhood welding shop told me about a guy who worked there who drilled 100 holes in a 12mm plate, Jesus Christ, with a 14mm drill bit spinning the wrong way. No, that's bollocks. You can't. You couldn't even friction your way through it. Why does a drill bit uh why does a drill bit when shown on video always look as though it's going the wrong way? Oh it's cause it's shutter speed, isn't it? That's all it is. If you change the speed of the drill it'll it'll start going the right way. It's just like spinning wheels on a car. You've watched Top Gear, surely. Spanner and a blowtorch, well, it would have been good, wouldn't it? What are you using the ball in for? Oh, for fuck's sake. Why are you holding it like a spastic? He's got his safety finger out. Stream has not moved to today. This is it's at the beginning of the video. I'm not explaining. It, it, it doesn't matter. It, the, the stream is on tomorrow. That's the important thing. What is going on? Oh, the press! There's right. So, I will prove that you cannot get a forty mil drill bit through a plate of twelve mil steel going backwards. You just can't. It's just not going to do it. It will melt and fuse before it drills through it. If if you're not being tricky, and we're talking about just a normal, what you'd call a right-hand drill bit, right? A normal right-hand fluted drill bit through steel. There's no way you're doing it. You just break it. You just melt. Oh, God, this is brave. I He always wants to do these things where he gets round objects and tries to two-point contact him, and one day it's going to spit in his face. Oh. You could run this in the vice, but not like this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All of these things are acting like springs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Five. that's twisted though. But yeah, go on. That's better than nothing. I'll give him that. Ninety. Oh, it's crippled that corner. The hockey stick that he made. Yeah, that's perfect, isn't it, Dil? Oh, what are we doing now? Oh, I hate when people grab at the edge of a vice. Oh, this is. This is this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. 
Whee! He's gonna tweak it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. At least he's bothered that far. Wait, what? Why don't you make it the same size as it so it disappears? Notice he hides the hole. Oh, has he done a bodge job of the hole again? All of his holes don't look round. I know that sounds mental, but his holes never look round. And I don't know if it's because where he's trying to deburr it, he's gone all wobbly and wonky, and it, it's an illusion, or if the holes are just not round. Which, it would, I don't, what, did he open it with a file or something? Well, he probably did. Probably stuck his 8, 9, and 10 mil file in a drill. Because, you know, that's how you open up holes. But why would you... If you're trying to hide the bracket, why don't you get rid of this bit that's all around the... Yeah, you'd make it the same size, surely. But... I, I, I don't know. You could have put a captive knot on that. Oh, fucking hell, look at that stick out of them bad boys. Boof! Click. The, the bolt's turning. That's like a C major. <laughs> How do you think he got into Dell's Angels? No hole would remain round after that kind of punishment. <laughs> uh, shit. Is he going to reach? Oh, only just. I look of it, yeah, only just. Right, I don't know about you, but that looks tight. As in, the tube looks tight. Yeah, you can see it's it's pulling it straight. You want you shouldn't. Have, uh, you need a longer bit of tubing, Dell bollocks. But again, you can't get the fucking lid off, can you? You mong. Oh, it's not even straight, look. Ah! You can see, you see the lid's sat on there, but it's not sat. There's a big gap. It's because this is too tight. You can see it pulling it. Right, there we are. Rear brake fluid reservoir mounted. That was the challenge. And also at the same time to get rid of that big, ugly monstrosity at the same time. And make it a little bit trick. When we see the reservoir... <laughs> Fucking trick! <laughs> that big, ugly monstrosity... That, that fit in there and hid between the subframe and was fine. At the same time, and make it a little bit trick. When we see the reservoir now, the bracket itself is practically invisible from the outside. I can just observe the fluid. There it is. And if I need to top it up, I just take it out, top it up, and screw it back in. But from the in Yeah, but you see... Oh, fuck's sake. You see, you just said then... So he knows how stupid he's been. He's like, I'll just have to unscrew it, fill it up, and then screw it back on. It's like, yeah, but that's not how it was designed. You've made it... You've made it you made it more less useful. You made it less useful, not more useless. You made it less useful. It's trick. Yeah, it's trick. Side, as you can see, that bracket wraps around the back of that reservoir pot, and it protects it from the blast off the tire. So, it's why is it so big? Why haven't you got a line from there going up to there and just take that ear off? Because what is this for? What is this doing? This corner's just there for the fucking shits and giggles. Not only trick and unobtrusive it's i never quite understood how the brake pressure does not pop the hose off because that's not pressurized it's on the wrong side of the piston those clamps look dinky as hell i guess there's not a lot of pressure in the brake system no no there's a shitloads of pressure in the brake system it's because you're on the wrong side of the piston so you think about an engine when you compress a cylinder right underneath it there's a massive volume with a breather 
so there's no pressure in there right so you're on the wrong side of the cylinder this is just the feed when the piston comes back that the, the the fluid needs to fill back into the the void that you're making and that's where the reservoir comes from that's what the reservoir is doing it's filling that in and you lose fluid because the pistons over time go out because the pistons go out to meet the brake pads because the brake pads are wearing away so if you take and this is how you work it out if you take the surface area of your pistons so imagine you've got a, a caliper system where there's two pistons right just say you've got a fixed caliper and a, a floating disc, right? But not the floating disc in the way you think. It's floating pistons. It's a floating caliper in sense. But you've got two pistons, just say, right? What you do is you take the surface area of them and then you look at the maximum material you're going to wear away. So just say if your pads are five mil thick and you can wear them down to by four mil, then you take that four mil and you times it by the surface area of the pistons and that'll give you a volume. That volume is what you are going to have to make up as the pads wear over time. And then what they do is they just make sure that the volume in the reservoir is more than that. They've probably got like, uh, I don't know, 50% more. You know what I mean? So you're never going to run out kind of thing. And that's what should happen. If you are losing more fluid than that, it's because it's either the brake, the brake lines can swell, which is one of the problems with just standard brake lines, is that they can swell. And over that length of that brake line, that can be a lot of volume. Um, and the other thing is that it can be leaking. Even if it's weeping ever so slightly, it can be leaking over time. It's under pressure, blah, blah, blah. It can also over... I don't actually know the the rate, but I think there will be some diffusion into the rubber itself. I don't know what rate that is, but there'll be a bit of that as well. It's also uh, practical at the same time. And all of these will all get... I think Dell is putting up a video just to wind Matt up. <laughs> well... I'm laughing at him. He's entertaining, if anything. Painted at the end with the crash bars and everything else. So that's it for today. Thank I can't wait for him to do the crash bars. They're going to be fucking great. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you next time. Look at that exhaust. Look at that exhaust bracket. That is just a fucking thing of beauty in it. I'll tell you what, though. This is the best bracket he's ever done. Must admit, best bracket he's ever done. It's not perfect. It's all right. It's all right. Some of the things he were doing probably get himself hurt, but for, for Dell, that's not bad. It's not the pattern is fuck this, which is what made me laugh when I saw the thumbnail. Eh, right, well, what we'll do is we'll have a look at this and we'll have a quick chat about this, and then that'll be the end. That'll be the end, and then it'll be live stream tomorrow. Right, you've only got two minutes. Well, it's, it's less than three minutes, so you best get on with this. Is this the car that everyone was talking about? I want to show how to bleed cooling system on BMW E60 and is, this is also called venting, venting of the coolant system and this tutorial will be helpful for people having BMW E60, E61 and also various E90 models. Uh, make sure that your car has a good battery. Uh, if it's not the case, like in my situation, make sure it's connected to power supply and then you have to step inside the car, insert the key into ignition but do not what the fuck is that it's like toast push the brake pedal just push the start button you don't want the car to actually start just... what is wrong with this right what were they thinking do you know when you used to stick a key in and turn it and that used to do it but no stick the key in and push this fucking foot next to this why just to wake up basically turn both of the temperature dials to the hottest position in my cases i believe it's like 95 and the fan dial to the lowest position. You have It has to be on. Then press the gas pedal or accelerator pedal for 10 seconds and let it go after 10 seconds. Right. Now 
I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. The car started venting or bleeding process. And when we're gonna step outside, I will show you that it's actually doing it. What's going on? You can open your coolant reservoir and see if it actually works. Yeah, you can see it's bleeding or venting. But let's just say, right, let's just say that this is what people are talking about. That's the auto system. Well, then it's doing itself then. <laughs> and let it run for 12, 15 minutes. And after that, start your car. And if it's not gonna overheat, then your bleeding or venting is done right and it's complete. If your car obviously this is why it wasn't you, you you're supplying with the wrong stuff, so how to bleed the cooling system. Oh my god. That you wanna make Right. I think so it's gonna be Oh my god he's got a bucket of coolant. <laughs> With us now, guys, we'll show you how to do it because uh, it could be a little bit complicated procedure. We have, yeah. The thing is, is if you've got coolant in the coolant system, right? So, what I, I think what people are saying is you've got a coolant system where you basically have an engine and then you've basically got a pipe going in and you've got a pipe going out. But let's, and the problem is. Is what people are saying is that if you fill this with coolant what you're gonna do like this what you're gonna do if you fill that with coolant it's going in and out but you're gonna have this headspace which trapped where the air's trapped so there's no way to get that out is that what people are saying Step one, tell the car to do it. Step two, go and have a beer. Step three, upload a video to YouTube. I'll give you how to drain the system. Uh, and if you put new coolant, now we'll show you how to do it. First thing that you want to make sure that you have a charger on the battery. You need to have... Is this the same thing? With the battery, go ahead and start adding... ...engine temperature. Uh, make sure you don't overheat the car because uh, no matter the procedure is done, sometimes. So I, I'm I'm not really I'm I'm not. This is these are all the auto ones. Change your call and you're doing it wrong. Oh, Scotty Kilmer. Let's have a Scotty Kilmer video about changing coolant and we're doing it wrong. Oh, that'd be quite good. Today, we're talking about your engine's cooling system. Well, watch this and then we're done. System. Why is it important? And I'll see you tomorrow. Important? How does it work? Can you use water as a coolant? Is it really necessary? You do use water as a coolant, you dumbass. To do a coolant flush periodically. If your car overheats, what should you do? We'll also bust... No, we're not watching Rye. We're watching this and then we're done. Rye will be tomorrow. Some common myths. So hop in and let's get going. Professional drivers and stunt persons on a closed course. Looks like an normal street to me. What, are you telling me to close the entire street off? Well, I can't see whether to close the street off. And that dry guy's driving there. I smell bollocks. Do not attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the modern cooling system hasn't changed all that much from the systems of 100 years ago? Did you know that combustion is still burning? I don't understand what that's meant to mean. Of course, modern ones are more reliable and efficient, but the basic system still consists of liquid coolant that circulates through the engine and out of the radiator to be cooled by the airstream coming through the front grill of your car. Let's start by seeing what the cooling... Right, look at this animation. Who did this? The pistons are rocking in the balls. By the airstream. The pistons are doing little circles, like towards and away from us, but fuck. Coming through the front grill of your car. Let's start by seeing what... Do you know how many animations of engines I see people do, and it just, they're always like that? Fucking terrible. It's like when driving, driving past answers, his crank pins are in the wrong place. It's like, I thought you lot of men are no engines. I thought you were meant to be the people we come to. 
the cooling system does. Did you know that about 70% of the energy in gasoline gets converted to heat? Most people think the cooling system... No, nearly all of it does. It's not 70%. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much all of it does there's a tiny bit of there's a tiny bit of like there's a tiny bit of a flash so there's a tiny bit of light there but nearly all of it is heat and we use that heat to extract motion what he means is waste heat is just to remove the heat and prevent the engine from overheating now that is true but it's more than that it also works to maintain sufficient Hang on, a hundred years ago, most things were still air cooled and using total loss oil system. Ah, it depends. You, you got to remember when you're talking, when you're talking a hundred years ago, that's what nineteen twenties. So there's a lot of it. There's a lot of water cooled engines back then, like boat engines. You know, because the thing is, when you're talking about engines back then, what engines are we talking about? You know what I mean? Efficient. Driving past answers has a new video. Which video is that? heat so that your engine can perform optimally it's really a balancing act that's because if a running engine gets cooled too much then it becomes less efficient its components will wear out faster and the engine will emit more pollutants the cooling sorry what what are you talking about if an engine gets cooled too well it becomes less efficient oh his water injection video i watched it and it bored me to tears and there's a lot of bullshitting in that it's nice. Its components will wear out faster, and the engine will emit more pollutants. Because the engine's too cool. I've got, you're talking about five different things here. You're not talking about the engine. This is what annoys me a bit about Jason's videos, because sometimes when he just says engines, he just means engines. It's like, well, do you mean combustion? Do you mean the actual components? No, 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 no. I meant... You, you get what I mean? When you have to start going, well, no, no, what I meant was, no, what you meant was you did a bad video. That's what you meant. You should, if if you're, because this is the thing, right? I do videos where I just sit here like this, or I do, so I just talk shit on the spot, right? It just comes off the top of my head, and it is my style. It is what I do. If people like it, they do. People like it, they don't. I don't care, right? I'm not an entertainer. I'm not doing this professionally, etc., etc. But Scotty Kilmer, Jason, all these people, drive for answers, drive past them, whatever you want to call it, they are trying to make a living on YouTube. So getting your terminology right, getting your animations right, being clear on what you're trying to say, especially when you write a script, is extremely important. So it's crazy. The cooling system... You, you know what I mean? Is it, it, that, that's madness. Is you, you, People say, oh, your videos aren't professional, Matt. It's like, but I get my facts more right than they do. And they're scripting this shit. Also allows the engine to heat up as quickly as possible. And it's not that's not uh, me patting myself on the back. That's me saying they've had time to think about this, review it, redraft, etc., etc., and they keep on fucking it up. You know what I mean? So it's like try harder. And then maintains a constant operating temperature of the engine. There are two types of cooling systems found in motor vehicles. Liquid cooled and air cooled. Air cooled. Ah, uh, oil cooled. You missed one straight. You see, this is the thing, right? If you're doing this, get it right. Old engines can usually be found in some older cars, like the original Volkswagen Beetle the Chevrolet Corvair, and a few others. In air-cooled systems, instead of circulating fluid through the engine, the engine block is covered in aluminum fins that conduct heat away... What? See, what, what annoys me is about this, right, is what really annoys me is that I try to not talk about engines just in motorbike terms, just engines in general. You know what I mean? Like, you'll talk about an engine, and then you can go and stick it in what you want. Um. So I hate when they're like the 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 so it the so car fixated, like you, how many engines? How many car engines have fins? Not many, at all. You know what I mean? Like actual fins. It's like well, you know, like someone just said, the Beetle was oil cooled. It wasn't air cooled. It wasn't covered in fins. <laughs> Well, you've got an excellent example of air-cooled engines. There's fucking loads of them. They still build air-cooled engines today for bikes. So you've got excellent examples, but people just, you know, they just, uh, they just like to stick it to, they just like to stay in the little wheelhouse and then get it all wrong anyway. 
the Chevrolet Corvair, and a few others. In air-cooled systems, instead of circulating fluid through the engine, the engine block is covered in aluminum fins that conduct heat away from the cylinder. Right, so there you go, aluminum, aluminum fins. Let me not get even started on the fucking English, right? <laughs> uh, most air-cooled engines that are from yesteryear were cast iron. They were alu aluminum, they were aluminium. They were fucking cast iron. There are loads of cast iron engine blocks out there that are air-cooled. So it makes it sound like they're covered in all these tinfoil fins. Powerful fan forces air over these fins, which cools the engine by transferring the heat to the air. But nowadays, most modern cars and trucks with internal combustion engines use... The classic VW Flat 4 does have... I don't know, that's maybe fins... Uh, their shroud and have a fan blown. But I, I, what I said was, is that there's hardly any. There are hardly any cars that were air cooled, just entirely air cooled, or just just air cooled in general with fins. Matt just breaks off the fins anyway. You, you don't fucking need them. Break them off. You don't need them. It's, it's, it's a waste of space. It's the liquid cooled method. A fluid circulates through pipes and. I love how he keeps on saying a fluid. It has been water. It's been. Let's get this correct. It's been methanol. Or water, or a methanol water mix, or a water and glycol mix. But generally speaking, over time, it has been water. Water is the predominant fluid in there, and water is the best fluid we want to use. It's the best of all. It's the best of any option. Passageways inside the engine. As this liquid passes through the hot engine, it absorbs heat, thereby cooling the engine. After the fluid leaves the engine, it passes through a heat exchanger or radiator, which transfers the heat. Yeah, you see, I don't like the idea of radiator and heat exchangers. From the fluid to the air blowing through the exchanger. What about electric cars? Electric motors operate under a whole different set of rules than internal combustion engines. Heat Rules? It's not different rules. It's a different system. God, you fucking idiot. Isn't as critical for the electric motor. And even... Titanium, uranium, magnesium, and plutonium. <laughs> oh, is that... Pl well, what about platinum? Plat... Plat... Platinum. Platinum. Titanium. Neum. Platin platinium. Now you see, platinum's actually one that doesn't. Is that one that, am I right in saying that that doesn't work with the naming platinum? Yeah, platinum doesn't. Platinum. No, it's platinum. Sorry, I'm just retarded. It's my accent that's killing it. This <laughs> motor can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Molybdenum. It'd be molybdenum. No. Aluminum. Min num num, so it'd be molybdenum. It'd be molybdenum. It, it doesn't kind of work molybdenum because it's such a fucking weird one to say. Uh, cars are air cooled. What do you think cools the water? Well, that's not exactly what we're saying here. What we're talking about is the interface between the hot and the cooling method. You know, all you'd say all systems are metal cooled because it's the metal that extracts the heat from. You know what I mean? So, I. I you know, water to what? You know, you've got water to air, water to oil to air, water to oil to air. You've got all these different ones. So I've got no problem with that. Um, we 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 do differentiate the difference between air cooled and water cooled, as in the main the main fluid. Uh, the the first fluid that comes in contact with this system is what we call it. So air or oil, you know, uh, air or oil or water. That's what I would say it is. It's the medium that we use. The working fluid in a cooling system, basically. You'd still operate with no problem. Ah, now, all oil, all engines are oil-cooled is a bit of a funny one. Yes, that's true, but you would say this engine is oil-cooled and you wouldn't specifically say that one is. So what I would say is, is that if an engine has an oil-cooling system to cool the oil... I would say that's an oil-cooled engine. For instance, like someone's already said, the Beetle, or like a Hayabusa, uh, a Hayabusa, fucking idiot, a Bandit. Suzuki Bandit's an oil-cooled engine, not a water-cooled. Well, you've got to be right, the original series of Bandit engines were uh, oil-cooled, where the newer ones are water and oil. So uh, the Z900 is oil and water-cooled, even though it doesn't have it. It has an oil-cooler, just doesn't have an oil radiator, if you want to call them then. Um, 
it has a, a water oil mixer thing cooler uh the sv has a radiator for both the cooler for the oil and the water so i would specifically say that's a mix um so yeah you know it it, it, it You've got to differentiate the difference between the twos. You know what I mean? So you turn around and say, oh, well, the Bandit. The Bandit is a, a brilliant example of an oil-cooled engine because it doesn't have a radiator, but it just ha it has a, an oil cooler um, where you have an engine that has just fins and no radiators, no pumps. Well, it has an oil pump, but it has no pump to pump to a, a cooling system. That's an air-cooled engine. And then you'd have a water-cooled engine where it has just a radiator and, you know, water coolant. Because there are engines that do do that. Um, the SV, uh, the, the R5. The R5 has a radiator, but it doesn't have an oil cooler. So you'd just call that a water-cooled engine. You know what I mean? So the, it, it, we've got to include the common parlance of these things in these things. You know what I mean? But so they, see, they're sea-cooled. <laughs> but you get what I mean? And jet skis are... Uh, not jet skis. What's the other one? Fucking snowmobiles or snow cooled. But you get what I mean. Is it, we're talking about the common parlance of when someone says that's a water cooled engine, that's an air cooled engine, and that's an oil cooled engine. We do have parlances for that. And, and of course, it all ends up getting bled out to the atmosphere. So if you just said, "Oh, you're wrong. All engines are water cooled, air cooled," you'd be like, "Well." Well, all that all that heat eventually ends up leaking as infrared into space. So it's all space cooled because if space was the same temperature as Earth, we wouldn't be cooling anything. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't really work. The the Earth would just get hotter and hotter and hotter. You get what I mean? So it, you've got to draw the line somewhere, and that's kind of where we're drawing the line. Are jet engines cooled? Yes, yes, yes. They're air, they're cooled. They're air cooled. Jet engines are air cooled. They are cooled by their own intake air. Because they have bleeds, they have bleeds everywhere, and for the main for the turbines, you have a pressure feed off the last stage of the compressor that goes in down the shaft, and it's bled through into the ring. So it's got the turbine ring, and it's bled through the blades and out of the blades. The outside of the combustion chamber has it's basically divvied up, so air goes into the combustion cans and round the outsides. Round the outsides, that it's almost like a bypass. That outside bypass there cools the actual combustion cans, where the air that goes inside them is fuel is added and burned. So, um, <coughs> axial flow engines are actually cooled by their own intake. Isn't an oil cooler a radiator? Well, this is the problem I have with the word radiator because when you get into like the physics of things, it's not really radiating; it's a convector, but. You know what I mean? It, or it's a conductor slash convector. It's a bit of a funny one. And the thing is, it, it, it's silly because you can't really you can't really separate them all out because both convection, conduction, and radiation happen. So all of those things happen. Um so yeah, it's 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 crazy. Water cooled intercoolers learn something. Well, you can have there's 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 air cooled intercoolers and there is water cooled intercoolers. There's it's just all over the place. Um, a heat exchanger. Well, you could call a piston engine a heat exchanger. <laughs> you could literally call it a heat exchanger if you wanted to, uh, and you won't be wrong. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like it's like the radiators in your house are more convectors than they are radiators, but. Pff, you know what I mean? Formula One cars run on stored air. Why are why are why are the world coolers wake up people? Yeah, Formula One cars run on compressed air. I thought everyone knew that. And all, but which they kind of do. Batteries are a whole different story. An EV's battery operating. Everything is radioactive. Ah, you're really gonna have to fucking convince me of that. Because I don't think I don't think just hydrogen in water is radioactive. I don't think that's radiating anything. I don't think it's losing anything because it's only a proton. So you you pretty much yeah you you pretty much fuck there. <laughs> Everything's radioactive. Everything can become radioactive. It can gain neutrons or it can gain energy, then lose it. Uh, dry ice in the coolers. Yeah, there you go. 
dragster, a good dragster thing is that. Oh, there's just just a, a, a water bath in the coolers. 99% of aircraft piston engines are air, air oil cooled. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, that it's easier for them because they can, well, one, they go higher where it gets colder anyway. Um, up to a certain altitude, then it gets warmer again. But, um, yeah, with the airstream. And not only that is a lot of time, if you've got, especially prop aircrafts, you are literally blowing them over. This is what was awesome about rotary engines is that the, the, the what's creating the thrust is actually cooling the engine. And they're directly related. So the higher the input of thrust, the higher the input of cooling. So it was great uh, in, in mass. Non-ionising, ionising radiation. Phones emit radiation waves, which were originally designed as a long wave radio. But that's not... Ah, you see, when you said radioactive, you've, you've used the wrong word. Because radiation and radioactive are not the same thing. It's radioactive, and it's that word active that means what it's actually doing. So no, sorry. Like I said, you have to push. You're gonna to have to push hard to get that one across. If you have a huge fan in front of an engine, might as well use it. Yeah, exactly. In temperature for optimal use is between 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Why the hell are we wasting time on bloody this shit? Falls below 40 degrees or above 115 degrees. Microwaves don't affect DNA. I fucking think they would. If you put your <laughs> climb in a microwave and tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's energy. It will do. Uh, eventually, it will do. It. Which you're just getting hot. That affects your DNA. Uh, it's a diesel engine that's cooled by total loss water system. Supply boats hot water. Fair. Why are we watching Kilmer? Because he's talking shite again. He says Ch changing your coolant question mark. He says you're doing it wrong. Is the title of this video. So we're about to find out because we're talking about electric cars. Why we are. F Changing our coolant wrong. Right. Then the EV's range decreases, and it can lead to battery damage and shorten battery pack life. Hence, the need for a cooling system to keep the batteries within their... What do you call the method of cooling of a valve that has particles inside? The what? Do you mean when you spray the back of a valve with fuel, that's evaporative cooling? What's this say? Microwaves don't heat the radio gamma waves. They emit, ref they emit reflex inside the chamber, causing vibrations in what? I've heard that's bollocks. That they just heat generally. Like you could put a cup in there and it gets hot. It's got a bloody water in it. Uh, he's always talking shite. Well, we know that. Uh, oh, sodium valves. Why are we talking about sodium valves? ideal temp the whole point of sodium valves is that's a transition so that's a phase transition so that's um that's an endoth oh no it's a it's an endothermic reaction oh no it's not an endothermic reaction it's an endothermic transition if that's what you're talking about Temperature range. A few EVs use air cooling. For example, the Nissan Leaf uses an air cooling method to cool its batteries. But most EVs, like Tesla, for example, the fuck has this got to do with anything? We're talking about coolant. Use liquid cooling systems, usually within an ethylene glycol coolant. The BMW i3 uses refrigerant instead of coolant in their system. There are two types of liquid cooling systems in EVs. There is the indirect liquid cooling system, which Asked about valves with particles inside. Valves with sand inside. I think you mean sodium, not sand. Look it up, Matt. No, it, it's bollocks. It, it's it, so what? What you said originally was that it it vibrates the water molecules, which is what I've been I've heard, and it's not true. In other words, microwaves are not tuned to. I've heard this. Microwaves are tuned to heat up specifically the water molecules, and they're not. You can look it up, and loads of people are wrong. It's not true. That's why I said sodium valves. I, I, I'm not. I'm getting lost to what we're talking about here. But yes, you can look it up. And you can find loads of sources, but they're not actually good sources. They're not like scientific sources. Um, they don't specifically target water molecules. That's. It's not a thing. It's just. It. It just vibrates things and gets them hot. Like I say. If it was specific for water molecules, things that are not that aren't got any water in wouldn't get hot. Uh, no matter they aren't heaters, bro. They are radio waves. How do you think radio waves heat up? What? No matter. Okay, I get that bit. They aren't heaters. 
Well, what is heat? <laughs> what is heat? Petrol engines aren't heaters. Well, actually, no. Eh, yeah, actually, no. They, 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 petrol engines are they are heat engines, so you would call them you could call them heaters in a sense. Um, we we I've got a diesel heater in the workshop, and it it literally just burns exactly like a petrol a diesel engine or a petrol engine would and it just creates that you we you use the waste heat to actually heat stuff it's actually more efficient than actually turn it into fucking motion but what do you think heat is heat is just energy i don't understand what your point is they aren't heaters bro they are using radio waves but i don't understand you can stand outside in the sunlight and get warm electricity heats up ceramic plates like cookers not radio waves bro we're not bros, so stop fucking saying bros. Number two is, you stand out in the sunlight and you get warm. Do you think a he- do you think the sun's a heater? <laughs> because that's radiation. That's not convection. But the 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 sun the sun is radioactive, but not from here. It's not what radioactive means. Uh that's right. If you throw a dry plate in the microwave immediately, you'll get as hot as hell. It fucking does. Ask me how I know, bro. <laughs> it doesn't target water, but it also affects what? Well, it affects everything in the microwave. The thing is, it, 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 it's adding energy to the system. It's adding energy to the system. It causes the molecules to vibrate, which is basically just adding energy to them through, fo- through photons. I'm not saying that you think microwaves heat up. The answer is... In the name, microwaves. I don't get what you're arguing. What are you arguing about? What do you think heat is? <laughs> what do you think heat is? All heat, all heat is, well, is what we would call heat, is infrared radiation. Right? Not radioactive. It's radiation. It radiates. I hate that bro shit. So do I, as you can tell. The sun is a granddaddy of all heaters. <laughs> as far as we're concerned, it is. Yeah. Uh... But yes, all heat is energy, but all heat is infrared. That's basically what we would call heat, right, is the energy in a certain frequency. And it's all photons. It's all photons. All the radio waves. So basically, my wireless headphones or my phone, uh, my router right now that's transmitting this signal is all translated with light. It, we live in a world of light. Honestly, watch the documentary of microwaves investigated during the war. It's interest invention during the war. I don't know what you... Maybe you'll see. I don't... What point are you making? What point are you making that you seem to think that I disagree with? I don't understand what you... There is no 100% efficient energy conversion except a heater, which is also wrong. Which is also wrong. Because every system, yes, has waste heat. You think, well, if I want to make a heater, but there'll always be sound, which is not heat. There will always be, other, generally speaking, in a lot of these devices, there's some kind of light. Right? You will admit some kind of light. Now, I know I'm saying that light is heat, but it has to be in that frequency. So if you, for instance, LEDs can give out a lot of light, uh, in the visible wavelength, but not that much heat, which would be not an efficient heater um, because it's turning it into light and not heat. Uh, a heater is not one hundred percent efficient. Not, not yeah, nothing is one hundred percent efficient. If only, even even when we're getting silly and we're saying stuff like um, uh, antimatter matter annihilation, even that's not one hundred percent, right? Or well, yeah, it, it it's not 100% useful, let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, it's it, we, we'll never make 100%. Well, no, that is 100%. Well, this is the thing, right? Because is it? Is it? Because um, there are... When we say efficient, what do we mean? And Because it, it's like, uh, yes, you can... Yeah, well, that's the whole point. You can't farm 100%. Because when we're talking about efficiency, what we're talking about? We're not talking about it's 100... When someone said... When I said, um, just say, an antimatter matter collision, right? Annihilation. That's not 100% efficient. It's 100% efficient at doing what it does. But then saying that, 
Uh, here's another efficiency. Here's a cup and here's a hammer. I can 100% efficiently smash this to pieces. You see what I'm saying? It's like, well, that's not we're, that's not really useful. We're, we're talking in the realms of efficiency as in the useful, useful energy we can extract from something. Um, Dell is 100%. That's true. <laughs> he doesn't waste one second of his videos. <laughs> Well, if we build a bomb, it's 100% efficient. Well, no, because what do you want the bomb to do? I want the bomb to destroy stuff. But a lot of that light and noise is that destroying stuff. Now, the noise might destroy a lot of things, the pressure wave. But is all of it converted into destruction? You know what I mean? 100% uh, efficiency. Every bit of energy is used without wasting heat on light. So even an IR heater would be like 99% efficient. No, because you're going to produce light that we can see in our frequency. The moment you do that, you're not. It's not heat, right? That, that we've, we've fucked it. Efficiency would be the measured in the amount of pieces. Well, no, because my my aim was here's a cup and I've now destroyed it. Just whacking it once would crack it. It's not a cup anymore. What I'm saying is, is that isn't really useful, is it? Uranium is not that efficient in terms of electricity. Well, no, because we don't turn uranium into <laughs> we don't turn uranium into electricity. Uh, did you make a complete silent bomb then? This is th this thing. If you hear a bomb from five hundred miles away, like it's a nuke or something, it goes boom. That's how loud it was. That's energy that's wasted because it got to me, didn't destroy anything around me. It's just shit. So there is no system that is 100% efficient because we define... It's like this, right? It's like when we talk about efficiency of engines, we can talk about thermal efficiency, we can talk about fuel efficiency, we can talk about power efficiency, power to weight, power to weight ratio efficiencies. We can talk to all these things about efficiencies. The efficiency is dependent on what you're wanting from the system. So, for instance, you can have you can have them two diesel engines, the heater I've got. You can have two diesel engines, the same two diesel engines. One is going to power them up, you know, a small car, or a skateboard, we're going to have that little diesel engine chug away and push that skateboard along, or we're going to use this the other one as a heater. So that exact same engine, without changing anything, imagine we can make these engines identical, without changing anything, these engines have different efficiencies, which, if you think about it, they don't have different masses. We've made them exactly the same. You know what I mean? So the masses are identical. Everything's identical, but the efficiencies could be wildly different. And it's because we define what those efficiencies are. If you could somehow harness magnetic power, that would be a true efficiency as it is no fuel or exhaust. No, well, you can't. <laughs> That's a misunderstanding of magnetism then. Because uh, it's like you say, you say harness magnetic power. What kind of magnetic power? Because... Mag magnetism comes from the EM field, and the EM field works like everything else, right? So you extract power, you put power in, etc., etc. You've got potentials; nothing changes anything. Uh, what about solar cells? If you mean in space, well, then solar cells they're going to heat up, so you're going to have waste heat in the system. The energy in moving objects—I don't know what that means. What do you mean the energy of moving objects? We use magnetics, how to make all energy. Yeah, I was gonna say all, all generators are magnet using magnetism. That's actually the only it, when it boils down to it, that's the only thing that you're using, using r attracting and repelling fields. I mean it's the most efficient use of energy required. We will then equivalent to C f get the cost equivalent to C four. Does a battery weigh more after or after you charge it? It does weigh more, yeah. You can. Have, I think. I did someone weigh a Tesla when they did that and to prove that out. Yeah, but with the help of electricity. No, no. <laughs> Magnetism uses the magnetic, the EM field, the electromagnetic field is the same thing. It's not just the magnets. No, but they are the the coupled. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I I I think you need to do a bit more reading up on on like particle physics. Uh, a black hole is one hundred percent efficient. No, it's not because what does it do? What's it doing? You can't. You're not extracting any work out of it. 
Uh, bizarre things about the moon. So you harness the Earth's magnetic field to power electric cars, and the Earth fills, falls into the sun. That's a good one for old Stu. Well, the magnetic field that the Earth creates, you will... Well, to be quite honest, you know, it's like um, geo... It's like do, using uh, geothermals. Every time we use a geothermal to remove energy from the Earth, you're removing energy from the Earth. The thing is, it's just that big that it doesn't really matter. And number two is is that the radioactive decay um, is probably going to be absolutely fine to keep that topped up. Um yeah, so it's pretty. It's pretty all right. It's because you know because this is the other thing. We might as well nick all the heat out of the earth to to power things because volcanoes are just going to piss it off anyway. That's the other thing that the good volcanoes just piss the energy out out into the system out, out of the system. I know that's why I said you can only develop some devices, but we right. So <laughs> I know that's why I said if only we could develop some device that could harness the power of magnets on a reactor scale. We do. They're called generators. That's exactly what we do. Uh, this magnetic field is fuck all. Well, I don't know if you add it all up, it's quite powerful. <laughs> it's it is quite powerful. Um. It's streaming just like Cold Fusion. Well, Cold Fusion is just fucking nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, gravitational pull of Earth is reducing over time. That's a mindfuck. The moon will eventually leave. No, 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 that's not what that is. Right, so, no. <laughs> the gravitational pull of the Earth isn't reducing over time. It'd have to lose mass to do that. The reason why the Earth is... The reason why the... The, the, the reason why... The reason why the moon is going further away is because the, the 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 moon is actually picking up speed from the Earth, right? Its actual velocity in its orbit is actually increasing. That's just transfer of momentum. That's actually got nothing to do with gravity. That's got nothing to do with it at all. If the moon goes faster, it's picking up. It's basically picking up kinetic energy. If uh, and because the moon's that's why the moon's moving further and further away. It's got nothing to do with gravity. The gravity is the same as long as the Earth's mass remains the same. Which it, yeah, the Earth's actually getting slow. The Earth's getting slowly heavier because it's been sprinkled from shit from space. Uh, it's very tiny. You know what I mean. Um, plus, we don't know what exotic matter is. I'm a bit dubious about exotic matter. Full stop. I know what you mean. I'm not on about diesel Jenny flywheels. No, we'll talk. No, <laughs> generators. Any kind of generator that turns motion into electricity is using magnets. We are harnessing the power of magnets. That that that's what's happening. Um, the moon is made of up of a gas. That's it. Going back to the start, you've the most predict. You're the most unpredictable streamer on YouTube. <laughs> I'm probably. Yes, exactly. The moon has been leaving us for a very, very long time. Um, but it, it's about it's about momentum transfer. It's not. Uh, it it's not nothing to do with gravity. Gravity remains the same. Like I say, the Earth is actually getting a bit heavier. But we're talking fuck all. The Earth's getting heavier, and the Sun is getting lighter. Um, press play, Matt. Well, we'll just go through this. But the moon is made of cheese. Well, that's why it's running away. Uh, I know a few exotic dancers. We all know about the moon. Uh, thanks for the correction, Matt. Uh, astrophysics really isn't my area, but I find it fascinating. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it, it is a common thing. And it's all to do with the momentum transfer. It's all to, also to do with the tides. That's Because people get tides wrong as well about it's just the bulge. It's not just the bulge. It's about... It's, it's actually... The tides are really... There's like five different factors of like... If you spin, almost like a centrifuge as well. So there's all these things going on. So there's the magnetic field, the, the gravitational field when you've got the poles versus the equators versus the moon and the sun, and then just basically the celestial plane, which is called the ecliptic. And there's all that jazz. And then there's also centrifugal forces. There's all these little things, and all these things added together make the tides happen. It's not just solely the moon. You could. There's, there's all sorts of shit going on. 
Uh, can we get some birds on the stream? Oh, I don't like that Andy mechanic guy. I think that's... I hate stuff like that. Can we make your diesel heater do another job as well as giving heat? Would that make it more efficient? As long as it doesn't detract one from the other. So if we wanted... I tell you what, if you wanted to make it a sound machine, it fucking does a good job of that. It's not ridiculously loud. It's not loud. It's just... it's You can hear it. So if you could make the sound do something... You know, I don't know, maybe alternate the sound so it's a speaker, you know what I mean? <laughs> then you'd be making use of that heat, that, that energy that's been blown away. I can pump the heat from the exhaust through a radiator and instead of blowing it straight out of the workshop, that would be making more, basically keeping more of the heat inside. Um, I meant a completely magnetic engine where there would be some sort of piston chamber that would increase and decrease in RPM without any electric fuel or exhaust spinning. Well, one, you've got friction, that's waste heat. But number two is, you're talking about electromagnet. So why would you have a piston with all those friction elements when you could just have a, mag a motor, like an electric motor? You just use the magnetic fields. Length of copper wire around the earth and link down to charge your eye. <laughs> That'd be a good one, actually. Uh... There are some crazy ideas, right? Like using, and it, it, they're, they're actually good ideas. The problem is, is that the losses along the way. But if you had a heat exchanger from the Sahara Desert to the poles, a lot of pipe work, right? So if you had a lot of pipe work that went from the equator to the poles, you've got a temperature gradient. And you could move fluid backwards and forwards based on those temperature gradients. And if you put turbines in the way of that, you can convert that to motion. As soon as you've got motion, you can use magnetic fields to create electricity. It would be just one hell of a proceed because the, the problem with that is that the, the the earth moves, everything moves, everything flexes, the thermal it's possible it would just be um, there's a lot of losses, but even if you could get it to work at 10% efficiency, if you could make it so it's basically you don't really have to do anything to keep it going, you know, like you're, you're, you're um, what's the word? Another way to do it would be to do it at the bottom of the ocean and the Earth's surface. So if you do a temperature gradient between the top of, you know, I don't know, somewhere on the coast where you could have water that's going down to the ocean floor that's cold and coming back up and being warmed by the sun somewhere in the equator, you can make power that way um, because it's, it, it's all about the energy difference, right? So on the surface in the sun where it's 35, 40 degrees on the equator, it's lovely, and then down at the bottom of the ocean, it's 5 degrees. That difference there, that motion of fluids moving, if you can move that, if you can move that fluid, then you can, you, you've got an engine. You, you can extract stuff out of it. You can't insulate pipes that long. Well, you can. It would just be one hell of a thing to do. And the thing is, it doesn't matter. The gradient is there. As long as you start to get things moving, that's all that matters. But then you just say to yourself, why don't we just drill down into the earth where it's hot? And then just, it's cold up here and hot down there. And you can do that anywhere on the earth. And that's geothermals. And that's why that works great. A mag... In a tight engine, basically, that's the point of magnetic materials that could function maybe from the tiniest function setting a chain reaction like dominoes falling in sequence to start the engine. All of that is just word salad bollocks. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, we need one big. The problem with solar grids is that they're technologically really complicated, right? There's a lot of circuits and pissing around where if you just have pipes. And you can get fluid to move in that pipe. Fucking bingo. We're sorted. You know what I mean? It's just like, if you can do that, right? So, again, geothermals are great. You just drill down. Down there, it's a fucking 150 degrees. Up here, it's 20 degrees. There you go. We've got a thermal, we've got a thermal gradient. And you can pump water down there. Let it boil. It comes up as steam, turbine. Fucking sorted. It'd be that simple. And the thing is... Your pipes are going to last fucking forever. Like, not forever, but for a long time. And then, that's it. The Earth's going to be hot for a long time. You know what I mean? 
The earth's going to be long, hot for a long, long time. So it's been c cooking for four and a half million billion years, so <laughs> we're still good today. And if you do that, you're laughing. The problem is, is you just need to get the... You need to get... Uh, and, the, and the trying now it is becoming more and more of a thing where we are... Um, there are more and more businesses that are investing more and more money in geothermal stuff. So in a hundred years, hopefully that is the thing. And then we won't have to bother with fucking fusion. We won't have to bother with all the really dangerous shite. It, it it's right beneath our feet, and it's like this: is that you can do that, and it's it's green. It's as green as it can get, apart from literally like being a lizard laying in the sun and not needing heating whatsoever. Um, you know what I mean? So if you if you lay in the sun, right, like a lizard. You don't need any of this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just be an endotherm. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, let's go with Scott Kilman. We'll, we'll knock this on the head. Which parallels the liquid cooling you see. In an whoa, whoa, whoa. UFOs do exist. you just got to understand what the... It's just anything that you... Flies that you can't identify. I see UFOs all the fucking time. There's a... It must have been a barn owl, maybe. There you go, UFO internal combustion engine except in an ev the folks ah one other thing real quick the dyson swarm the sun you see the thing is i was reading something recently about dyson uh, about dyson spheres and they're probably not that efficient that's the problem there might be more efficient ways the the thing is the dyson sphere comes from the idea of what is the maximum energy you could ever get and it's like well stars you know what I mean? It's like stars. If you could harness all of the power from the star, that is the only place we're going to get energy from where it just... Because it, it just is. It's just there. And if you think about the energy we get on the surface of the sun and turn that into a sphere, that's the maximum you can get. But a lot of people are like, mm, yeah, you know, we want Dyson spheres, Dyson swarms, whatever. We're like, we want them. And it's like, or maybe civilizations. But what kind of civilization would need that kind of power? Like, what are you using that to power if you think about a sphere around the sun that's the same distance from you know it's one astronomical unit in radius if you've got a dyson swarm that big but you've only got like 10 planets in the solar system you can only fit so many people there why do you need that much power what do you need that much power for it becomes a bit ridiculous um but yeah, it's you get what I mean. It's like, why would you? Because you say, well, we need that much power. There's loads of stars. It's like, why would you need that much? I don't. Because there are scientists out there that are looking to see if they could ever find any example of a Dyson swarm or sphere. And I'm like, but who would need that much power? Like, for instance, if we used all, if we sucked the Earth dry of all of its heat in a thousand years. The amount of power that is is just fucking astronomical. But the sun probably puts that out in like two seconds. So why would you need to harness all of that? You, you see what I mean? What are you doing with that kind of power? The, the only thing you'd need that kind of power is to blow up other stars. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nvidia needs that much power. That's probably true. The fucking latest graphics card. But you get what I mean? It's like that's that's the Matrix graphics card. That's what that is. Um, but you get what I mean? You, you, you'd only need star power to blow up other stars to get to light speed. No, you don't need that much. You don't need that much. At all. Well, you can't get to the speed of light, but even half the speed of light, you don't need that much. Like, for instance, I could, they were looking at the solar cell stuff. For a kilogram, they need, like, what is it, lasers in the gigawatts or megawatts? I think it's megawatt lasers, like 10 megawatt lasers or something. It's not much. You know, what I mean? like, like I say, the power that's in the Earth is like fuck it. God, I don't know how much it is in joules, but it's stupid. It's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? To keep an entire planet molten, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty hot. That's pretty, a lot of energy in there. Mister Dirty, I have a question. How can you make a vacuum in a long stroke engine to not exist on the power stroke in said cylinder? What? How can you make a vacuum in a long stroke cylinder not exist on the power stroke? I've got no idea what you're talking about. Focus is I'll wait for you to write the next bit. I, I don't understand. How can you make the vacuum in an in a long stroke? I'll get rid of the long stroke cylinder bit. 
How can you make a vacuum in a cylinder not exist on the power stroke? Not exist. Do you mean when you push the piston down, and how is that not creating a vacuum? Well, because a vacuum is all about how many atoms you've got in what volume. Now, when you are at the bottom of your intake stroke, you've got a full cylinder. You're now compressing it. So all you're doing is you're actually just increasing the density. Then you're burning it, and it's going back down to that bottom dead center, which is the exact same amount of atoms that were in there when it was at the bottom of the intake stroke. And just say, just say if the valve's closed exactly zero and 180 degrees, yeah, that would be exactly the same amount of atoms. Now, those atoms have got a lot more energy that was locked in the fuel, and that energy is now liberated as heat, and now these atoms are going like crazy. So now these, these, these atoms are jumping around. So just add fuel. No, no, no. So imagine you've got no fuel. If you have, you've got an intake stroke, the intake valve closes. Now you compress it, you've increased the density. If it's a 10 to 1, you've increased the density by that much because you've reduced the volume, right? So you've increased, you've, you've reduced the volume, so you can call it increase the density. But you've got the same amount of atoms. So imagine, imagine you draw a cylinder down to the bottom on the intake stroke. You've got a 1,000 atoms in there, just say. Now you're going to squash it to 10 times the size, or a tenth of the size, sorry. You've now got those 1,000 atoms still in there. So when the piston goes back down again and you start back at bottom dead centre, you've still got a 1,000 atoms in there. It's not There's no vacuum in there, if you get what I mean. The way you get a vacuum is when you start at top dead centre and pull down on the intake stroke, but don't open the valve. Now you've got a cylinder, as long as there's no leaking. Now you've got a cylinder that's got a, a, a volume of nothing. There's no atoms in there. Um, so, yes, if that's what you mean. ...to cool the battery, not the motor. Then there's a direct cooling system where the battery cells are submerged in the coolant. But this method isn't used by most car makers yet because it's still in development. The maintenance intervals for EV cooling systems differ from EV maker to EV maker. For example, it's recommended the Chevrolet Bolt get a flush every 150,000 miles. Contrast which is basically the life of what most people don't use their car for. Just add to the Tesla, who doesn't want owners serving their cooling systems at all. The owner's manual for the Tesla Model 3 states that the battery coolant doesn't need to be replaced for the life of the EV under most circumstances. If you open the coolant cap resulting in damage, they won't cover it under warranty. In fact, the Tesla cooling system is sealed and the EV will notify the owner if the cooling system needs service. For this stupid question, but I thought engines ended up under pressure via a vacuum, and that's why they have things like crankcasements. But I thought engines ended up under pressure versus a vacuum. Wait, well, so the crankcase vents is so you don't have pumping losses. And a pumping loss is basically if you're fighting against a vacuum or over atmospheric pressure, so either way, either side of atmospheric pressure, then that is a pumping loss. So if you're trying to compress a cylinder and the vacuum in the crankcase, that's actually going to cause the pressure, it's pressure equalization. So the pressure or the forces trying to push back against the piston will be higher. If you go the other way and your crankcase is pressurized, as the piston goes down, it's going to pressurize the crankcase even more, which is again is a pumping loss. So a pumping loss is when you have to fight against anything that isn't atmospheric. Basically, as as long as that as long as that engine is in an the same kind of atmosphere, you know what I mean. So, a pumping loss can be against pressure or the other way against vacuum. It just depends which way you want to go. I thought there was no such thing as pressure. Sorry, are you having a, 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 a an, 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 what's it called an aneurysm? <laughs> what do you mean you thought there's no such thing as pressure? So basically they're saying don't touch it and only take it to the dealer when it tells you to. In some EVs, the cabin cooling Why are we talking about EVs? The system helps speed up fast charging. The air conditioning system that keeps passengers cool does the same for the battery pack. In other words, the AC is for cabin comfort. And it also helps keep the battery cool and makes the fast charge even faster. The cooling system regulates the temperature of both the cabin and the battery pack. But let's return to the internal combustion engine. Isn't it just a measurement and we don't know what it is? No, we know what it is. <laughs> you just look up pressure. It's it's the force applied to a surface area. We know what pressure is. 
No, what there is is atoms don't have pressure because atoms don't have a surface area. In other words, it's an emergent property is pressure. Like uh, like a week, you know, almost. A week isn't a thing, right? We don't have a week. Like, you could say Wednesday to Wednesday, now that's my week. Or you can have Monday to Monday to Friday, that's my work week. Or you can have Monday to Sunday, that's a calendar week. It's an emergent property, it's not a thing. Like, a day is a day, we can see what a day is. You know, it's when the sun comes up and the sun goes down and the sun comes up again. That's a complete cycle. But pressure is... Um, it's two things added together. It's a surface area and a force. So it's not a fundamental thing. It's an emergent thing. Pressure's real, but it's describing what it is. Like I say, atom, it's when people turn around and say, oh, well, the atoms have pressure. It's like, no, they don't. They, the atoms don't have pressure. What they have instead is they have energy, and that's what matters. And the reason why all this matters is you say, I want my engine to go faster. It's like, well increase the pressure okay then and you get the pressure dial and you're just adding in more pressure well, what do you mean you're adding in more pressure how are you doing that like an engine itself right an engine itself what we do is we draw in air cool and then we compress it well, we we put in pressure in is that what pushes the piston down well no because what you put in is what you'd get out and you'd actually lose a bit because of waste heat there's always bloody waste heat because there's friction losses and then there's the actual work done to the fluid. So you're going to lose energy just by compressing a mixture and have it pop down. That's not extracting anything. You've got to put in what you get out. What you have to do is you have to in you have to increase the pressure in the cylinder when you go up to when you come down. But how do we do that? And it's like, well, we just add pressure, and that's not an explanation. Just add more pressure. It's like but all right, here's a can of pressure. You know what I mean? That's not a thing. It's like, well, what is pressure? For instance, like I've showed before, is that you can you can make pressure disappear, right? Or you can you can make pressure disappear. And you can get a a, a vessel, a, a cylinder, and you can have a pressure gauge, and then you can heat it up, and all of a sudden we get more pressure. But then I can put it in liquid nitrogen, cool it right down, and we've gone below gauge pressure. We've seemed to have lost pressure. But it's a sealed system. It's like, what the hell's going on? It's like, because pressure isn't that fundamental thing. This is why they're called heat engines, not pressure engines. Because heat is the fundamental thing. That is the fundamental difference between one state and the next. And it's the thermal gradient. The thermal gradient is what it's all about. You go from a hot to a cold or a cold to a hot, and there you go, there's an engine in between there. Fantastic. Or we can use that. To, it's basically to do work, right? So that's what it's all about. Um, pressure is a thing, it's just not the thing that does the thing we want it to do. When and how? Pressure is just a measurement, right? That's all it is. It's how much force is applied to that area. It's just like, uh, you know, pressure in your tyres, you know, I don't know, when you stand on an egg and you crush it, that's all to do with pressure, you know, that kind of shit. You know, you can have uh, hydrostatic pressure with just a column of water, that kind of stuff. Overheating damages your car? Well, overheating can burn and melt holes through the top of the engine pistons. It can damage the seals between the cylinder head and engine. And what the hell is he talking about now? Where have we gone? combustion engine. Want to know how overheating damages your car? Well, overheating can burn and melt holes through the top of the engine pistons. It can damage... The engine pistons. The seals between the cylinder head and engine. Overheating can seize your engine, meaning the electronics in your car will still work, but the engine... What? The engine itself won't even turn over. Instead, you'll hear a knocking or clunking sound. Overheating can also crack your engine block. It's a very, very expensive repair cost. So now you can see why it's good to care and maintain your cooling system regularly to prevent these horrible problems from happening in the first place. But how do you know if your cooling system is failing? What are some common signs? Well, a normal... Your engine melts. Normal operating temperature for most cars is between 195 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. If your temperature gauge is reading higher than normal or if the needle is in the red zone, then it means your car is overheating. Especially if it happens more than once, it could mean your water pump might be failing. The head gasket might be worn out. Or you could have a coolant leak. Or the head gasket might be worn out. Oh. Or your radiator may be clogged. It could be a bad thermostat. 
clogged or leaking or there's lots of fucking news. and what's he gonna say about thermostats that too you should get it addressed as soon as possible oh nothing really okay to prevent the problem from escalating into more serious damage another common sign is decrease in fuel economy of course that could be caused by many different things one of them could be a failing cooling system oh that's an oil cooler yep your heater isn't working the way <laughs> on the bike <laughs> <laughs> it should. It could be a sign of a bad radiator. If your radiator is leaking or clogged up, you won't get the heat you expect. Or sometimes it can be due to a bad thermostat. Some people know how to check the coolant level in their radiator, but always remember to do it only when the engine is cold. That's because heat and pressure build up in the radiator. So it's extremely this is this is a, a a message to Dell. Extremely dangerous to remove the cap when everything is still hot. In a <laughs> In addition to checking the coolant level, you'll want to also check its color, consistency, and smell. If you consistency, I don't know how many people check the coolant consistency. Give it a little chew. Mmm, mmm. Little, I'll, I'll I'll pour it from one hand into the next. The coolant is dark, dirty, and it has a burnt, sweet smell. It means the coolant is old and it's become corrosive. But see, the thing is, as well, is how many people know what good coolant and bad coolant smell like? I don't think anyone. Time to flush and replace the coolant. Coolant should be translucent and have a bright yellow or green color. Some. <laughs> or pink or blue. <laughs> Times it can be pink or red. Another one. Of or blue. Or, or any. Fucking shut up, Scotty. This is what I mean. It's so narrow minded. Morning sign is. Because you got to remember, right, if it says you're changing your coolant, you're doing it wrong, right? That could be anyone. Purple, yeah, fucking, mo fucking black, white, clear, you fucking name it, right? It, it's, it's just Jesus Christ alive. But the whole point is, is that it, this doesn't specifically say cars. Steam coming from under your hood. And, of course, if you see warning lights on your dashboard, you should take your car to the shop to get it checked out. Okay, now let's address some common questions and myths. For example, some people believe that the coolant doesn't need to be flushed, just topped up. But the truth is, the coolant, like motor oil or any other fluid in your car, will degrade over time. If it doesn't get serviced, old or broken down coolant can cause engine wear and corrosion. A full engine wear? I don't know where you get that from. Flush doesn't just remove the old coolant. It also removes the built-up contaminants, including rust deposits and debris. It also thoroughly cleans up... When you say debris, debris from what? Fucking hobnobs and digestive biscuits. What do you mean debris? The cooling system with detergent and protective conditioner. And remember, it's important to fill your system with high-quality coolant. What does that word mean? I love it when some people say this. What does high-quality mean? What does that word mean? I want to walk into B and Q, not B and Q, fucking B and Q. Walk into Alfred's and say, "I want some high quality cool," and it's like the most expensive one. Then that doesn't mean it's the most high quality. Where's the limit? Where's the line? Do you sell shit quality coolant? You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck are we talking about? To protect your car against corrosion, damage, and freezing in the winter. A common question is, can I use water as a coolant? Now what? You do. Water can serve as a coolant with regards to heat conduction. It actually conducts heat better than antifreeze. But that's not entirely true. It's not about conduction, but go on. I don't advise using it as a coolant because it lacks corrosion inhibitors and water pump lubricants. If you don't believe me and you're using water. Oh, I do love this water pump. Water pump lubricants. What the fuck has it been lubricated? What has been lubricated between the water and the pump? Water is a coolant. Well, that's your decision. But eventually, your hoses and pipes will rust and corrode, and you'll. Your hoses and pipes. Pipes will rust and corrode. Corrode, meh, I don't like the word, but yeah, go on. Face serious repair costs later on. And if you live in an area where it freezes and you forget to put antifreeze in, it will crack your engine as it turns to ice. Another myth is that a small drop of coolant under your car isn't a big issue, but actually it's not true. First of all, federal and state laws mandate that you can't dump antifreeze and other hazardous materials into surface waters. Antifreeze is very- Ah, just put it in the fucking river, it'd be fine. Very poisonous and can harm pets and children. But it's not only about preventing a safety and environmental hazard. Also, that a leaking radiator will eventually cause failure of your cooling system. Here's why. If your radiator is leaking, well, eventually it can split open. That means the rest of your coolant will dump out quickly. Or if the leak is in the hose, the hose will blow out. It's wiser and cheaper. Well, it's just overheat. It's an overheating issue again. Cheaper to address a leak sooner than later. Generally, as soon as you notice it. Otherwise, you'll end up spending more time and money later. 
more common sense. I'm so glad this is an infomercial for kids. Peter, to fix the issue after it <laughs> Scotty has a cracked head. <laughs> what I meant was, how does it get the piston to travel further in the cylinder before before, before causing the vacuum which forces it back? I, I'm sorry, you've made that worse. How do I get the piston to travel further in the cylinder before before causing the vacuum which forces it back? You've made that worse. I'm sorry. I really don't understand what that means. Someone else can have a go. Escalates into a bigger and more expensive problem like a blown head gas. So what should you do if your car's overheating? First, kill the AC and crank up the heat. It might sound counterintuitive, especially if it's hot outside. You'll have to roll the windows down so you don't bake. But it does work to keep the engine cool because the heater transfers heat from the engine to your cabin. It's basically just a small radiator like the radiator in front of your car. Yeah, but it's just a, it's a divert. What do you think it does when it's what, what do you think it does when it's hot, Scotty? You dumbass. Only it's inside your car. Then after turning on the heat, find a safe place to pull over and shut off the car. If you're not too familiar with your car, then you should call a friend, tow truck, or roadside. No, if you're not too familiar with your car, you should get familiar with your car during the combustion stroke. How do I get the piston to travel further in the cylinder before causing a vacuum? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. I, I really don't get what you mean. Assistance if you during the combustion, the power stroke, the combustion stroke. The valve opens to allow the piston to move fresh air. To... What? The valve opens to allow piston to pull fresh air mixture. What? What are we talking about? I don't know how David's explanation fixes that. Are we talking about a two-stroke or a four-stroke? You have one. In the meantime, let the engine cool down at least 15 minutes or more. Keep your eye on the temperature gauge till the needle moves back to the normal range as the engine cools. If you're familiar with cars, then you can check the coolant level. But as mentioned earlier, you should check it only after it's cooled down. Otherwise, it's dangerous to do when the car is hot. If the coolant level is low, a quick top-off could protect your engine for now until you're able to get your car to a nearby shop. But if you do drive it... A two-stroke. I'm still confused. Watch the temperature gauge closely and always refer to your car's owner manual for the location of the coolant tank and directions on how to add the coolant. Here's another common myth. Some people think engine coolant and antifreeze are the same. Actually, it's not. Antifreeze, usually ethylene glycol, does not freeze easily and it also does not. <laughs> what do you mean easily? I'll, I'll, that is, 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 is chemistry is worse than mine. Not boil easily. Coolant is a mixture of water and antifreeze. Car Yes, but in common parlance, they're the same thing, aren't they? Have you got any antifreeze in your car? Have you got any coolant in your car? Oh, it, it's leaking antifreeze, or it's leaking engine coolant. It's leaking coolant. It, does it really matter? You're just supposed to run 50% water and 50% antifreeze. It's important to top your car up with the same engine coolant or antifreeze formulation that you used last time. That's because mixing different types of antifreeze can produce dangerous chemicals. Drain your old antifreeze coolant if you're not sure what type it is and can't match it. Don't risk it. Mixing coolants can lead to engine damage. So, as you can see, don't underestimate your engine's cooling system. It's a complex system that's necessary for the life of your engine and car. When your cooling system is working, you won't notice it. But if it fails, then for sure you'll notice it, and so will your pocketbook. If you like this episode, please share it and subscribe to my... Oh, so we didn't find out what, what we're doing wrong. My God, that was retarded. He's really trying, isn't he? Fuck me, Jesus Christ. Look at these. That's a sad day for Scotty. Look at these. It's all about him, isn't it? About Scotty. It's all about him being this celebrity. It's got nothing to do with videos. It's just got that, like... It's, <laughs> it's just all about... Look at... It's like... What's he done recently? I just left this state and I'm never coming back. Again, that's about Scotty. No one else is telling you the truth about ram trucks, so I have to. Sad day for Scotty Kilmer. Toyota have shut down production. R.I.P. Don't know what that's about, don't care. I'm sitting in the biggest money pit car ever made. Do not buy. It's about Scotty again. I just got fired. All right. 
been flapping his arms around like a crazy bastard. People say I'm full of crap about these trucks. Well, watch this. You probably are. Hertz is going bankrupt and you can get a free car soon. All right, cool. Well, I'll wait for that then. Jesus Christ. Oh. Anyway, I'll find the video about... Well, you could probably tell me tomorrow or next stream or whatever. We'll see if we can find it. I just bought my dream car. These new cars will blow up in your face and kill you. No, Scotty, you'll kill people. Remember your fucking brake line fiasco, you dickhead. Never thought I'd actually like a German car. That's racist, even against the Nazis. And he's flapping his arms again like a crazy old bastard. How old is Scotty Kilmer? He must be getting on to about 160. Oh, Jesus Christ. It, it, there's a lot of Scotty in all this shit, though, isn't there? And it, it's so infomercial shit. Mechanics don't want you to know about this. This is really low-brow... Fucking... Oh, God's sake. Really low-brow adverts. You know, you see them on Facebook, it says, you want to know this shocking truth about Emma Stone? It's like, I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> can I suggest a video? Yes, you can. You can suggest one. Uh, he And he's killing it on YouTube. Is he actually making a lot still? When was his last... Yeah, you see, look, 19 hours ago, 82,000 views. It's crazy. He's killing it on YouTube. Is there a stream tomorrow? Yes. I'm waiting for this question, then I'm going to tell everyone to fuck off. Here's a video that actually happened when you overfill your motor oil. Oh, is that, is that, is that, is that who was asking? Who said a can I? No, it was whoever this is. It's a weird name, but whatever. Uh, I hope he gets sued by... It's never going to happen. They don't, They would never sue him or anything because it's drawing attention to him. They only sue people when it's big, big stuff, you know what I mean? And even then they don't. They just send you cease and assist letters and that's it. Uh, I'm waiting for this. Uh, how to clean valves by who? Who's that? I'm just going to have a look at this and then we'll go in. And I'm not mean looking at the video. I want to see who it is. Ah. Oh. Put the whole thing. If you've got a link to the video. Oh, I'll tell you what. Go on to the... What time is the live stream tomorrow? Oh, this is it. Oh. Oh, it's him. I know him. I think. Did we what? No, we must have seen this. This is six years ago. I hope I hope he uses an angle grinder. Let's put it that way. What I'll do is I'll save it on here. I'll save it on here. So it'll be there for tomorrow. Because we're not doing it today. Because I've got to go and get something to eat. Yes, yes, yes. It's brilliant. Cool. We'll watch that then. That'll be a good one. All right then. So uh, tonight's test has worked. Successful. Hope that makes sense. And I will see you in a bit once I get the thing up and remember how to turn it off. I can't remember how to do it now. Bye. Bye. It still hasn't worked. <laughs>